Hi, Louise here at Cute Neek Studio, and today I'm going to show you a walkthrough, a flip through of some envelope journals I made, and then I'm going to do a tutorial to show you how to make it. So uh, I made two different styles. These are going to my pen pals, and um, so I did. So you can you can see you know that there are different styles you can make these envelope journals from. Um, this one's very colorful. Yeah. And then this one's kind of like garden shabby chic, I suppose. Romantic. Um, okay, so let's walk through them. I'm going to just do one at a time. And uh, so you can see I've decorated. These are envelopes that were put together to make a journal. Got a tie with this vintage kind of ribbon. Has a little dangle there. And uh, we'll do that. And this is the back really pretty um so it's three envelopes tucked together to make this kind of por uh, portfolio tuck spot type journal so um let's go through this one first i have this little paper clip with a little dangle little heart dangle and some stationery right on the back of that that to the side and then under this little tuck I have um, a little journal mini journal that I made you can put right on the back of that little tuck spot and it sparkles I don't know if you can see that on the video and then it opens up and there is quite a few pages of um, in, uh, ledger paper Underneath there's a reset song, and then there's a poem bought by uh, Lord Tennyson. And that just tucks right in here, or you can go in this way, either way. It's like, more like a belly band here. It's just easier to tuck from the side. And then under here, in the second tuck spot, I have some stationery. So um, these are two sheets. One in the backs of those, and then there's a little sheet tucked inside. Come right on in the back of that. And that just tucks right in here. In the second flap, there's two flaps under there. There we go. All right, and here's a pocket that I made. And, uh, and then I made this little tuck to go inside. And that's decoupage there. And this is the back. It's napkin decoupaged. And I made this heart and decorated it. And then these little tags I got on an Etsy, like a printable. I really like those. I think they just go so perfectly with this. And then on the back, I've got some pretty vintage lace that matches, kind of goes really nicely with it. And then I have some, um, Graph paper that can be journaled on. This is uh, tea stained. And then there's just, just this romantic paper. It's just really sweet. And uh, I haven't made anything in this style before, so this was new for me, a challenge. It's quite nice. I tried to keep it clean, not too over cluttered like I normally do. But anyway, this goes right tucked in there. And then, voila! some more tuck spots. So here I have these journal cards and on the back can journal on that. That's some hand dyed paper there. And that's just uh, decorated on there. Um, so that those are these tucked back in here. And underneath I have some more stationery. Or I think it's like a little tuck spot. So got this neat teacup, pretty teacup, and I put some washi and lace and furrows and on the back, a little poem. This was a, a bag that I cut down, and uh, let's decorate some sparkles. And this is some stationery, you can run on the back, so the stationery. And it just tucks right in there. Alright, so that's under there. 
And then over here, I have a little uh, belly band thing here. And then this little booklet I made. It's real sweet. And inside, there's lots of places to journal. Coffee dyed paper. But then I also have some little, you know, you can tuck little secrets in there. Or stationery. And there. So, and that decorated that. And um, here I made a little folder. This really pretty paper. I love this paper. So it's just regular designer paper. I cut it down and then I scalloped that, punched that out, and then um, distressed ink the inside. And then I put some letter paper in there. And that tucks in this little pocket here. So there's two pockets. So that one goes in there. And underneath that, there's another pocket. And I have some stationery. Uh, some papers that I cut down. They're real pretty. And I, I stamp the back. So you have lines. You can, vintage lines, you can pour it on. And that goes in there. So it's really, really cute. Lots of little tuck spots. And uh, I hope my pen pal likes it. Um, let me put this back in here. These little stationary papers with this cute little paper clip. Go. And it just ties together. So that's one gifty I made using three envelopes that were just plain, boring envelopes to begin with. Uh, so then I made, uh, so I'll tuck this over here, and then I made this real colorful one for my friend. This cute little charm, real sparkly kind of fabric, and on the back I've got beautiful type of um, butterfly decoupage, and this is just a little silk ribbon, and I made this little tassel -y thing to hang off of it. But again, it's just three envelopes put together. So uh, that's one, two, three. And you can see this one's a lot, you know, totally different style. Um, and it's really bright and happy. So here I have some stationery under this piece of, or this tuck spot. And this is some hand dyed paper I made using Easter egg dye. So there's a few sheets of that. And I think the pink just really makes it pop. So that goes in there. And then here I made a little booklet using a vintage card. And then I have this little tag that I decorated. This cute little elephant. It's so cute. That's coming off there. I'll glue that down before I ship it to her. But that's a little tuck spot for a bookmark tag. And on the inside. It's real pretty fabric. I made it into a pocket, and then I have this stationery I made that I stamped. Beautiful. And then some ledger paper. And underneath there's sparkly dragonflies. That gets tucked in there. Okay. And then here's some trim, sparkly trim. And then I have this little, I made this heart. That I put glitter around it and then on the back I did a doily with a heart um, napkin and here I've got this washi tape with the little dolls, Russian dolls and this cute little tuck, there's a dragonfly there and this cute little envelope, it's really vintage, um, she pokes out, sorry, she should have been poking out, she's winking at you and um, so she's like a bookmark and then this little booklet that I made. Look at that sweet vintage card. Pretty paper. And this is um, using more of that vintage paper. And then I decorated this paper up and added some washi trim to it. And it's some more of my hand dyed paper. And then you can write on there. And in that sweet? I just love that the two gentle hearts and then in here I put some stationery so you can write on the backs of those 
And that tucks in there. This tucks in there. You probably hear a little bug buzzing around. It's springtime, getting hot, and those bugs are hatching. So she comes out like that. And tuck her in there. And then tuck that in there. So lots of little tuck spots. It's just so sweet. All right, and here's a little tuck. I made a little bookmark tag with a little mushroom. And that's a vintage card, and you can run on the back of that or use it as a bookmark. And I put some sparkle on the actual word sparkle. A little tattoo tape. This was an envelope I made. This is paper I made using the jelly plate. Actually, no, this wasn't a jelly plate. This was the where you put two pieces of glass together and you pull it apart. I think it's called Dend Dendrick painting. And then in here I have some, this was some stationery I found at a thrift store. Some just St. Jude's research, but it's just perfect. And it's got little spots, so you can use that stationery. There's three pieces. Tuck it in there. You find all kinds of bits and bobs to put in these little journals. And then I have this little uh, green doily there so it's bright and happy that pops in there oh my doily it's only when i am on a video <laughs> i put this thing together with no problems until i'm trying to film oh i know what it was i wanted to put it this way there we go so that way the little jewel stands out it's kind of cute and here's some stationery I used some designer paper, but I, um, I glued this, or I taped it actually. I taped these um, note cards I found, my notes, ideas, and inspiration, and make a list. And this is the, the paper. And I put these little stickers on there just to make it special. And that tucks underneath the green doily. And here we have another little booklet, and I have this little sewing clip. It's, this is real sparkly paper and um, that I decorated a little bit. And there, um, that's the same napkin I used on the front cover. And that's some more of that handmade paper I made. And I just, I actually sewed this in there. I just took the sewing machine and put it in there, so now it's a little booklet. And there's some more of that fabric. It's so pretty and a little feather and a little jeweled heart. And another, um, folder I made out of some designer paper um, here I clipped some little stickers they're upside down and this I made some avocado paper uh, stationery and it's colorful with some washi tape and I've got the word love and these are glittery butterflies so they pop in there there's a bottom and the, at the very bottom there's a an, um, tuck spot and in between that there's another tuck spot so I put these real happy stickers which is the same ones I used to make love but I had an extra sheet so so there's all kinds of stuff that's that's underneath that goes underneath in that little fabric spot and this one oh, I just clip it in there handy dandy little clip there we go And then there's the back. So I've got some fringe. And that is this little envelope journal. And I'm going to do a tutorial and show you how I make them. Because they're quick and easy. I mean, well, you know, they're not quick if you're going to spend a lot of time with the decorating part. But um, putting them together is pretty quick and easy. And the decorating part depends on how fast you are and deciding what you want to decorate it. So we've got happy, colorful, we have shabby kind of garden, and we are going to make now a, um, I guess kind of like a grungy steampunk, um, grungy steampunk kind of style. So I went ahead and, because the design process can take a considerable amount of time, I went ahead and I went through my studio and pulled grungy steampunk stuff that I had and I went ahead and made like some stationery and um 
in, in that style, I made some stationery and I hadn't finished these tags, but I went and cut some tags out and some little, um, little booklet, some little tuck spots and that, like that folder I have in, in each one of the other ones. I went ahead and made the folder. Um, and I can do another tutorial to show you how to actually make all the bits and bobs. But what I wanted to focus on was the actual, um, the actual portfolio itself. So I went ahead and made some stationery with some tuck spots. And um, that folds out like that. There's an envelope right there and stationery. And um, I made an envelope with this. This was some designer paper. And I went ahead and made an envelope. And I made some stationery to go in there. So I made all the bits and bobs. I may not have made all of them. That is a piece of cardboard I just cut out and made a little tag. That was really neat. And I thought I had it in here. I did. Pop that in there. Um, there we go. And then I just threw some things in here that might go really well. I made this as um, like a little tuck spot. So it's just got um, a kind of like steampunk well, not exactly it's kind of you know actually it's louise's own version of grunge some stationery so we're gonna we're gonna find places to tuck these and we're gonna we're gonna make um our our envelope portfolio a journal whatever you want to call it and um we'll focus on the the core piece and then we'll tuck all these things in. I just threw some other bits and bobs and we're going to have to decorate the cover. So let's get started and I probably have loads more in my studio so if, if we're going through this and it's like hmm I need something else I will pause and get something else. Okay um, so I'll put this to the side and these are the envelopes well you can use any envelopes each one of those journals i showed you they were made with different envelopes so you know i got some bigger envelopes i have loads i had some extras which is fine i could make a make a bigger one um but you can use whatever envelopes you want and whatever size you can use smaller envelopes and make a little mini one um what you basically do is when all is said and done, you're going to tuck this in there. Okay, so that's going to be like, oop. And then I added a third one. Like that, I think. It doesn't matter. You can do it any way you want, really. Okay, so I did mine like this. So that's going to wind up being the three pieces. Now, the uh, one thing is that, so the first envelopes I used, they were, they were scalloped down to here anyway. And these aren't, they come all the way up. And I want that to be down a little bit. So I just literally, um, I tear it down. You can cut it down if you want. You know, I'm making a grungy journal, and that might want it being covered anyway, so it's okay. So, um, that way, it's easier to get stuff in and out. That's just me, my personal preference. So, I tear those down a little bit. And again, you can cut it down with some scissors if you want. You can leave it tall if you want. Everybody has to do what they want to do. It makes them happy. But I'm just going to tear it down. Sometimes things just tear us straight on down. <laughs> Not this one. Okay, so then, um, I'll just use my little, you can use double sided tape if you want. But you're going to, um, you, know, you need to secure it down. So I just put a little bit of glue because you're going to wind up adding so much to it that it'll 
it'll be secured down overall. But just to get started, I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. a variety of ways you can do this. Yep, you might find other YouTube videos that do it slightly different and that is okay. It's not a problem. And you might find another totally different unique way that's even better than what I'm doing and you can share with me. Because it's all about sharing ideas. A little bit of jump There's that one. Good. Good. And then I glue this down. Or you can cut, you can even cut it if you want. And then you would have a um, another pocket you can play around with. But um, I'm going to go ahead and just glue it down. So that now I have. Hopefully, and it's fine. It's it's kind of off kilter. It's fine. It'll be fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it's okay that it has bits and bobs in it because you're going to want to be covering it. Okay, so now we start to decorate. Um, you can you can paint it. You can cover it in fabric. You can cover it in stickers. You can rubber stamp it. Um, you can do really whatever you like. I'm going to grab a napkin because that's what I did with the other two. And I'm trying to stay, you know, on course here to be slightly similar in how I'm doing it. So you take the, usually a napkin has, um, it's a three ply. So you take the, the, the two bottom ones off. They can sometimes be a pain. Some come off so easily and others are like, nope, I'm not budging. So you take those off and that way you're just left with the decorative part. And um, I could just cover the whole thing in that easy thing, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a kind of wainscoting. I'm gonna wainscot a wall. So I'm gonna put the darker down here. And I'm going to put the lighter up there. And I want that to show, so I'll probably go down like that. Just make it fun. Now, you can do, you can add your napkin uh, a variety of ways. Mod Podge is a, a common way. Mod Podge. Um, but you can also just use glue stick. I'm going to use glue stick because um, it won't curl. The paper won't curl as much, whereas Mod Podge will make it kind of floppy. And I wish I had my big glue stick. I actually ordered new ones, and they came in the mail, and I was so excited. And I've set them down somewhere, and I cannot remember where, where I set it down. So... And it's okay, I'm going to um, go a little bit down. I could just glue it down first and then cut it. That's okay, because I use all the scraps. That's okay, that tore. Just tear it. There we go. Okay, so let me put this to the side. And um, just load it up with glue. And preferably you have a big stick, like... I do somewhere in my studio, but I've sat down, came in the mail, and I already lost it. So, you just put you some glue down. I'm not going to go all the way down yet, because I'm going to put that bottom part. You know, and different things will work depending on where you live. It's really dry right now and cool up here in the Appalachian Mountains. So, you know, things are going to work a little bit differently, whereas you might be down in, like, the Florida Everglades or something, though, where it's, like, 100% humidity. 
and extremely hot. So, it, you know, adhesives are going to be different depending on where you live. Um, so that's why sometimes people rave about one adhesive and then you go to use it and you're like, well, I don't see what the big deal is. Well, it's, you might live in a totally different climate. Um, you know, glue sticks are going to work a little bit differently if it's like really cold and it's the winter. I mean, you know, so keep that in mind. You might have to experiment around a bit. And then I just lay it down and it's okay. You want it to kind of overlap on the edges and then you trim it up and you can just pull it so it's not so wrinkly. I like the wrinkles though, especially with the grungy one, grungy look. The wrinkles will look really nice. And the thing about Mod Podge too is sometimes it could tear the napkin, so. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over this top lip here, right over the edge a little bit, so, cause I'm gonna overlap this next um, napkin. So, that little thing has just been bugging me the whole time. <laughs> it's going now. I don't know where it came from. It looks like from a flower. Okay, I go over the edge. Especially as I want to hide the brand name on it. I can't remember where. I think I got these napkins on an Etsy shop. But you can find some pretty napkins at like Tuesday morning. And those party supply shops. They'll have usually a section that's got some pretty cool napkins. But I like supporting Etsy shops. So I got these for me. Because they let you buy one or two instead of the whole pack. So I'm going to use the clean edge. Sometimes I might use the rough edge, but for this, I'm going to use that clean edge. Go over the top. Smush it down. And then I'm going to trim. Push those edges down. I'm quite happy with how that... It didn't seem as crooked when I first did it. We're going to cover that with paper so it's okay if we're messing around with it a little bit. So, there we go. Just straightens it up a little bit. Okay, so then I'm going to trim my edges. Or, you know, I might decide, or you might decide you want to overlap the edges like that. That's fine too. You can do whatever you want. Keep that in mind. There's lots of ways to do this. I probably should be using larger sh scissors to um, trim that, but that's okay. All right, and I don't throw my scraps away. I put them to the side because they get used. Scraps are fun to use. I really need to do my version of making, some people call it master board, some people call it Franken paper. Um, where you take scraps and that you've saved from all your projects, goes in a big box or bag, never in the trash can, and um, you piece it all together and make all the little bitty scraps you piece together and make bigger pieces of paper. And you can cut them, then take those and you can sew them. I often sew, and you can um, make tags and pockets and tucks or I have been saving all of mine I'll cut that flip off since it's wanting to fold I've been saving all mine the big pieces of paper I make to uh, I'm gonna make an entire journal out of Franken paper the entire thing is gonna be my, all my Franken paper and it's gonna be so awesome so I've been hanging on to my latest ones. That does not want to trim. I'm using the wrong scissors. Okay. Push it over there. This is kind of the barn part. But I'm using the wrong scissors. 
Uh, it's not boring to me. I love cutting paper. I love the sound that scissors make when it's cutting paper. That sound just makes me happy. It's that crisp cutting sound. I think I'm going to open the doors of my studio here in a minute. The neighbor's kids were out playing. So it's a bit noisy, which is lovely. I love the sound of playing children. But it would have drowned me out. I'm a little video here, but it sounds like they've gone in to maybe eat supper or something. So I can open my studio doors up. Sweet kids. We have really sweet neighbors. At least one side of us. And in front of us. So we're on a roll because ta -da, we now have almost the makings of a cover. Um, so now I think we need some trim. We can always come back and do the cover as well. So keep that in mind. Um, I got this at a estate sale. And it's just this ratted old, really old vintage tape measure. And I just thought it would be kind of cute as a trim oh well not that 50 cent sign <laughs> i went on half day too so i only paid 25 cents for this thing i want to get a, a good strip that doesn't have i'm gonna do the middle okay so um anybody see where i put my scissors here we go i just think that's so neat and it will make some nice trim um this is already kind of torn there, so I'm going to start there. And go across here. So now I need some better adhesive. Um, all right, so we're just going to go a bit wide. I'll go down here. And that's just going to blend those two together nicely. I also have um, diamond glitter glue. That would probably work, but I'm going to use this Fabri-Tac because I think it needs it. There we go. I love that. You find the neatest things at estate sales. I mean, for 25 cents, there's some lovely trim that you can't find at the shop, so it's going to make it really unique. And then I'll just cut that bitch down. I might need to get my clips. I sometimes use my little clips and um, while it's drawing, you know, I put the clip on. Cut that a little bit more. Okay. My table squeaky. There. That's looking really neat. So now it needs some more stuff. Um, yeah, it definitely needs some things up here. We might come back to the... Um, cover and go ahead and do some of the innards um give me some time to maybe find some more things i can put on the cover that's kind of along the lines of grungy i also have a jar of um call these things the Steampunk. It, this is from Walmart. It's a big old pack. And then I've got some little pieces that was in a little, um, I'm going to say a, a little jewelry. I got one of the craft stores in Julian. This came online from somewhere. So um, I'll keep that nearby. I'll actually pull out some pieces that I think would look quite nice. That might look nice on there little heart and some gears. Gears are always fun. I got these actually, believe it or not, from my son's, um, our son's Halloween costume. And he was, uh, we decorated a men's tie that had kind of like a steampunk look to it. And we decorated it even more with um, hot gluing all these things on his tie. Not loads of them, but some. 
just to kind of really decorate it. Well, steampunk needs to have like a kind of randomy thing. Um, we got some trims here that might want to add. And I've got loads more if these don't work. But browns, you know, kind of blend that brown color there together. So we might do that. And um, what else I have in here? Yeah, I won't spend too terribly much time over the on the top part because we can come back to that. And this would be nice because it's going to blend this yellow part up to it. Like put that over the over it. That's really nice, actually. This is going to work out nicely. I think it's supposed to go this way. Sometimes these trims, I'm like, is it backwards or upside down? Okay. And I'm going to put it over here because I don't want to cover up this um, musical note. So, maybe I'll come down there with that. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, let's... Um, do this do the trim first. Alright, let me get this out of the way. This is taking shape. Oh, you know what? As I was going there, I, I went to a, um, a garage sale and they sold, had clothes for a dollar. And I bought a bunch of clothes that I cut all the lace off and buttons and trims and things. I cut it off the clothes. And this is kind of like got a strange green color. That might go nicely too. You know, give it a bit of a romant, romantic kind of look and feel to it down below. And then I can put this on it. I like to go big, go big or go home. Well, I am at home. I'm at home studio. Um, there we go. And it still, it doesn't cover it completely. That's an idea. Put this up there. Hmm. That is kind of interesting. Yeah. I don't want to put too many on here because then it, they're kind of lightweight. They're not real metal. They're pretend. But um, just just playing around here. Nah. I think it needs to be more hodgepodge. And I really do like this, but I don't think it's the right, it's just not the right look for it. So it'll get used on another project. All right, let's go back to plan A. What is that on there? We don't want the orange. Okay, open it up, put some fabric tack because I'm, I'm actually gluing fabric. I tell you what, I like that diamond glitter glue. It's really good, but it dries white. So I tend not to use it on the cover. Because, um, you know, it's only certain things can be used. But it is good glue. Adhesive. Because it's glue. Um. on my fingers everything's sticking to me now and you will have to go back over some of these edges on the napkin that's common you just put some more glue there it's just because I started off there and that glue got a bit dry before I put the napkin down so I just go back over it and go around the edge and just tack it down As I'm working on it, you know, I'll get it back down on there. It's usually just on the edges. There we go. You want to come up too, so I will tack you down. There we go. On the corner saying, give me some glue, lady. All right. 
push that down. It's one thing I like about Fabri-Tac too is that you still get, it, dry, it dries pretty quickly, but you do get a bit of time to adjust things if you need to. Okay, and then we put that brown down here. Blacks would look nice with this too, but I want to go with the brown kind of sepia tone, which is the, there we go. I might actually print out some bits and bobs put in here too. I, um, I found on Etsy, it was a shop that had some, what do you call it? The steampunk print, it, digital printables, and it was like uh, bits and bobs. I forgot about that. I might uh, pause the video and go print those out because I bet you those would come in handy. I'd probably find something to put on this cover too. Alright. There we go. So we're getting somewhere. And now I'm going to put this on there. I like that. I don't know how well it's going to glue, but we're going to try the metal piece I've had for ages. A lot of people do the steampunk thing, and I've been wanting to. This isn't really truly steampunk, but it's got some grunge, and it, it will have a little bit of steampunk with it. Just a little bit. Okay. My son's costume was awesome that year, though. That was his last get dressed up for Halloween. He handed out candy for the animal shelter. Had like a trunk or treat. And, um, you know, our kids are a lot older and they're not interested. Okay. That's going to go up there. Because I like it to have a little bit of a romantic feel to it sweetness something sweet about it okay Oop. that's a stick to me and i'll probably get my clips all right i had like a few just little random ones i'm thinking down here yeah And then while this is drying, I'll go print out, I'll pause and go print out some more um, of the steampunky digitals I had. I may not even need them, but I gotta let this dry anyway before I start taking you through the rest of it. Because um, it does, it, it helps if you just let it dry before you kind of carry on. It dries quickly though, that's the good news. If you Fabri-Tac, fabri, -Tac, fabri -Tac dries very quickly. And, um, but if I start flipping this over, all this stuff's going to fall off. I don't want that. So I am going to put you on pause for a minute, but it's looking really good. And, um, and then I'm going to go print out the, uh, steampunk thingies I was mentioning. Okay, be right back. Okay, um, I looked at the downloads of the steampunk stuff I got from Etsy, and they are cute, but it doesn't quite go with this style, because I'm not going full-on steampunk here. Um, I'm really going more grungy with a little, you know, hints of, of steampunk, so uh, those aren't going to work, but that's okay. We're going we're gonna to carry on here. So the next thing we're going to do, we're, we're going to come back to the cover. It's actually kind of cute like it is, so I might leave it, but I don't know. I'm thinking I might throw something on there. But let's go ahead and work on the inside. Okay, so uh, what you do is you're going to need a paper to go inside of here on that bottom to cover this up. And then you need a paper on the top. And uh, you can use whatever paper you like. I'm just reaching over here and grabbing some papers I have. And then you have to figure out which sides you need to cut it down to. So it needs to be a little bit smaller. So we're going to go five and, not quite five and three quarters. Yeah, 
five and a bit there. And then on this side, eight and a half should work. Um, now you can, you don't have to use this cutter. You could just measure it and fold it to where you want it. That's perfectly okay. I actually, um, sometimes I do that before I cut it. Um, I want that piece to be on there, so we're going to go this way and do the folding. That way I, I maintain the integrity of that piece. So I do this. It's just easier for me. I know I'm going to need it there. scissors. I just get a straighter line if I use these things here. So, um, I'm going to save my strips because that could become a belly band or part of my Franken paper later. So I never throw anything out. Bear with me. Limited space here. Okay. So I wanted that on there because I just think that looks nice mm -hmm. to have some of that yellowish color and I'm not bothered that it's not going to be perfect on this side so that right there I need to get a little cutter out It got cold here, so I had to put some sleeves on. In the mountains this time of year, it's hot during the day and cool in the evenings and mornings. Um, and I'm probably going to cut it down a little bit here. I should have done that to begin with, because I don't want it to be flush with that. Um, I want it to be a little bit down some, about right there. So let's see. There. Should have done that. Okay. Let's save that. The one underneath is going to go flush. There we go. And then I'm going to put this kind of this one. And you don't have to go all the way to the back with this one because you're not going to see it. So, since this, I'm going to do this because it's going to lock this off. sound of scissors on paper. Don't know why. Yeah, so that's going to cover that bottom part. And then we're going to have this part. Now over here, I'm going to, so I'm not going to glue anything down just yet, because I'm going to do a few things, you know, I'm just, I'm just spacing things out right now, and I might change my mind, so I don't secure it until I'm 100% happy with it. Well, okay, maybe not 100%, until I'm sufficiently happy with it. 
getting these plies off the napkins can be a bit of a pain. These napkin companies can probably make a lot of money if they just made decoupage napkins and left the, the extra ply off and just sold the top part. They could um, save some money with the, the two ply or three ply. There's another ply on there. I save these and I use them when I'm doing painting and you know, I need napkins to wipe brushes or whatever off. Let's see. There we go. Ta -da. Yeah. All right. So let's all write to the napkin companies and say, please just make us some deck of brushes. Saves us some hassle and saves them some money. So I like using a napkin. Um, I'm going to glue it on this side. You don't have to go all the way down because I, well, I'm going to put something here to make a pocket, but I'm going to go ahead, go ahead all the way down. Might as well. You won't really see it when it's covered by the pocket, but you might do if you peek inside it. And, um, I could just wait to cut the whole thing off. It's just easier for me to. Go ahead and trim it up somewhat. So I'm just going to go right down that middle, that line, to make it more manageable when I'm gluing. There we go. And I'll lock that off. Okay, and then I'm going to get my glue stick. Now this one, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put this down because it's very lightweight and feathery lightweight and it will just blow around all over the place unless I stick it down. So I do know I definitely want this napkin on here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on there. And you know what, later on if I change my mind and I find a piece of paper I'd rather have instead, it's no big deal to cover up a napkin. But I'm pretty confident I'm gonna Keep the napkin on here. Okay. So it helps a little bit. Other than on this side. But what I do is if I make a mistake and I wind up having a, a wonky edge, I cover it with some trim or something. I don't overthink it. Uh, that's nice. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around and trim it. I probably need to sharpen my scissors. Get a bit dull when they don't cut napkin. But you know, they do get lots of goop on them. But I've got this nifty um, sharpener. That's pretty DIY, and it gets it, you know, sharp enough. It's not going to get it, you know, fabric cutting sharp. But for paper crafts, it's fine. But for my um, fabric scissors, my husband has this like top notch sharpener. Probably would have helped if I hadn't put in my cover to put that on there yet. Now we'll get to it. Yeah. I'll probably have to trim it up just a little bit more, but yeah. And we're gonna cover that anyway with. Okay, so now I'm going back to spacing things out. Now you see this is kind of funny color here. I'm going to get my distress inks and just um, cover over that. So I'm not going to worry about that just yet. And let's see, let me get my box of stuff here. Because I need a 
either a piece of fabric or paper to put here that's going to make a pocket. Um, and I did throw some papers in here. What about the same, the right size? I think this one here. Yeah. That's kind of neat because it looks like a little drawers. I'll have to cut it down some. And I want the, these things to be kind of on the center. So, um, right there. What is that? Get that out of the way. Okay. So now I'm going to, um, so we're just kind of putting our base down here. I'm going to get my distress inks because before I put anything down, if I do want to ink the edges, you know, it's easier if you do it then. So let me get my distress inks. Okay. Um, we're also going to use this doodad here in a second. So come on. I'm just going to use black and a black suit and walnut. Just ignore those. <laughs> they were there temporarily. But I haven't found a place to put them yet. So, um, What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little half moon there because uh, it'll be easier to get papers in now. So I use a circle punch and just kind of gauge it, you can see. I'm going to pull this up and you can see it better. It's just easy. You can see you got your little half moon there. And... Boop. So that's easy peasy. Alright. So I'm going to ink up some edges. You don't have to. A lot of people don't like inked edges. I see it often in junk journaling groups online where people say, do you have to ink your edges? No, you don't. Um, but um, some people do, and I do. So there you go. Sometimes I don't. depends on what I'm making. But I think it makes the um, design pop a little bit better when it has it. So it's, it's appealing to my eye and uh, just give it a little bit of a an ink up. Gives it a bit of depth. No different than if you were painting a picture, really. You know, and you use your shadowing and everything else. I know it doesn't show up that much on this one, but I'm primarily is see how the edges are white. You know, it's really more to kind of get rid of that white edging. Because white edging just does not go with this design. Some things I work on, it looks fine. But on this, it does not. So, bye-bye white edging. This one I'm going to use. This walnut. Goes better. It's all about the detail. At least it is for me. I'm a detail oriented person. Okay. And before I go put that back in there, I'm going to go ahead and ink. So. 
I know it's going to cover this part, but I'm trying to do it just to get a little bit inking on this little crevice crease there so it looks better if that part's showing. And just in case some of the outer edges show, I'll go ahead and just go around the outer edges. Okay, and then the other one. Right, so that's going to go in there, that's going to go in there. And then on this side here, I'm going to use a black. about this. Go ahead and bend it. Okay, so that's the detail work. Now we can go ahead and probably put this down. being haunted by this green stuff. Um, so for this one, you don't have to glue the entire thing in. It'd be really awkward to try to get glue all up in there and, or tape and get it in there. So I slip it in first. Okay. Get it where you want it. And then I go back through. You can use glue or double-sided tape. And I just, I just, this part down, it's okay, this back in this area is not glued down. Um, and I'm probably going to use double-sided tape. Let me get my double-sided tape. Okay, so we have three sizes here. I'm going to use this fat, fat one here. I don't know which brand this is. I use either Score, S-K-O-R, or Sukwang. One of these might have Sukwang on it. S O O K W A N G. I like those the best. Um, what do you call that place? Um, scrapbook.com, which has some awesome stuff on it. They have their own brand, and I, I'm not I'm not really that happy with it. Um, actually, we can just go ahead and put this on the edge here. But Sukwing and Score tend to be the better ones. I know some of you have probably used double-sided tape, only to find that later on the stickiness wears out. And you have to go back over it with some glue stick. And I don't, don't know what to tell you, except maybe try a different brand, one of the better brands. Or um, just use glue stick. It might be where you live. Might be the issue. I'm just gonna put two down. Should be plenty. So I'm gonna take this one off first. I want to take that whole thing up. There we go.
This is one reason why I never chop my fingernails off, even though they always look kind of icky. But having fingernails when you're crafting comes in handy. Uh, I, my poor hands always look rough. My husband and I went to the grocery store the other day, and um, after I get to the grocery store, I looked down, and I had black ink. I mean, it was covered. Covered in glue. You know, like uh, sticky glue and um, black ink. So it was all peeling. It was black. <laughs> it looked horrible. It looks like a disease. But, oh my gosh, these people are going to think I'm diseased. Okay. So on this one, it's a pocket, so we're going to just put tape here, here, and here. And on that one, I'm going to use my medium. So there's a medium and small, and that's the big. So I'm just going to use a medium. Oh, the small would work too, but um, you know, it's a judgment call. So for this one, I'm going to do medium. I think it'll work. Fine. Yeah, my clothes always have, my pants, my jeans always have stains and glue. It doesn't really wash out. Um, I do have nice clothes on reserve for when I need to look nice, but everyday attire is crafty, mucky crafty. Yeah, so when you see somebody walking around with raggedy old clothes and everything, don't assume that they're hard luck cases. They might just be artists. Okay. And not every little bit has to be, you know, you're securing it so things can just stay in there. And you don't even have to, you could just secure the sides. I've done that. I did that with another one. I might even do that for this one. Well, let's think about that because I did have two. I just think it looks nice like that. Um, I might put a belly band here. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Probably put a belly band over the side. I just don't want to cover up too much of the design. So just keep that in mind. You can make it multi pocketed. The other ones, I think I had two. fun part. You get to decide how you're going to design it. I didn't quite line it up there really well, but that's okay because I can cover that with something. All right. That's going to go there, and so that is, make sure, I've done that before where I turn it over and I put the tape on the wrong side. All right, so we'll put the bottom one first. Now this one is a, this one I am going to use this smaller one, because then if you take up too much space, the pocket part, with the tape you don't have enough space to put things in it. Again, it's a judgment call on when you use which size tape. And whether you do the bottom or not. I'm probably going to put a belly band over here. I might even find some fabric. That would be nice. If I do that, I'll use glue, obviously. I might go back and find that lacy fabric I cut off of the shirt. That might look nice on it. Yeah. And it gives it more um, dimension when you use different things. You know, I've got napkin, paper. If I maybe put like a fabric-y belly band here, it just gives it more dimension. It's not so flat. Um, I mean, if you like clean, crisp edges, a lot of people do. I don't. Um, 
by all means just use paper you know because then you'll have your just more like a scrapbook style versus junk journal and I'm not really using much junk here so I can't really call this a junk journal I do have some junk that I've used though all right so there we go and you know we have some imperfections but I can cover that up now I am going to just do a quick test run here on this um this I don't know that green it kind of goes but that green is not really the right it almost is though so I'm gonna have to find something similar I'm thinking maybe just some proper some proper lace color like a an ecru or something or maybe some kind of burlap right here all right we'll come back to that you know let's carry on with our base here okay so now we need some more paper where did where these other papers i've got more but um i like that so you're gonna need we're gonna need one that goes across the whole thing here and then um then we need our pocket pages so i think i kind of like that i kind of like this leafy thing too um, keep in mind a lot of it will be covered up so I need to remember that um, this kind of thing here. That looks nice. Probably use that. I like the cameras but they don't quite it doesn't quite go with the whole look. Um The phone thing does there in a way. Yeah, but you're gonna I'm gonna wind up covering a lot of that. So I think that's paper that I use to make like an envelope or something. Let's see here. So I got more of like um patterny stuff. That would look nice underneath that piece I told you needs to go across both on this. Alright, so I think we're gonna use this one and this one. Back to the side. Let me make sure this is going to cover enough because it's not quite long there, so it have to be like that. Yeah that work. Alright, so I'm gonna put that underneath and you're probably wondering what is she talking about? Let me um let me up to where it needs to be. You want to get as flush as possible. I might wind up having to cut that down. So actually what I'm going to do is I probably need it to be a, just a, a hair shorter. Instead of using my thing, I'm going to cut along here. There's that sound on there. Alright, got some scraps to add to my scrap pile. No, it's this way. Okay. Okay, and just for the sake of, I'll always know it's like that. I want to do this just because that's going to bug me. I don't have to do this, but I'm going to. Now I'm going to slip that in there. Um, okay. Yeah. I had to think there for a second. All right, so I'm going to put my tape down. Here. another one. Okay. And I'll do two over here. I could have used a glue stick even on this part. I'll probably 
you know what? I'm going to put a piece of tape over that just so it stays down forever. It just helps. But yeah, glue stick would work for this part. That's okay. Tape is fine too. Off. Okay, I'm not gonna ink the edges of. Oh, yeah, I am. Sorry, I lied. I am just on this side here. Yeah, no, this is the way it has to go. So just on this side here. Just up. You're not gonna see the other side, so I'm not gonna bother. Get rid of the white edging. All right, so I'm just going to put that down like that. I didn't put it down very evenly. Silly woman. It's okay, I'll cut this down. Do better than me. Envelope's tearing here, but that's okay. I can put a little tape over that. instead of a half moon, I'm going to give it some edging because it'll kind of 
And that looks kind of weird there. So if I do some edging, uh, so let me get my little edge puncher. I have quite a few of these different designs. I'm going to use this one. It's not as frilly. Um, what I'm going to do is put something underneath it to catch the little bits of paper. It'll be easier to clean off. And then you just punch. I think this is um, Martha Stewart. I got a whole bunch of these off the Facebook marketplace. And I mean a ton of these. A lady had sadly lost her husband and took up, her sister convinced her to take up crafting. And she invested in a lot of craft stuff and then afterwards decided she was more um, into things like quilting and stuff. So she sold off everything she had initially invested in. And yours truly was fortunate enough to be the first one there and I assured her it was all going to a good home and would be well used. Okay, so then it's just easier to take that away. All right, I'm going to ink it with some black um, because it'll make the edging show up a lot better. Didn't line it up very well, did I? Get that off. There we go. Yeah, there were so many of these um, Martha Stewart um, punches, and then a Sizex machine. So I didn't have one, in, and uh, so that's I, I'm quite happy with that. And. And it helped her out because it got rid of all the excess stuff she probably didn't need in her life she, and she can focus on what she enjoyed doing so yay for facebook marketplace which i don't normally find stuff really nice stuff like that it's rare where we live to find those kind of deals it's always pulling up out things that match your criteria search outside of your search area and i'll see these mega lots of paper crafting junk journaling stuff for a really good price and then i'll look at the distance and it's like six hours from me i'm like come on facebook marketplace and um i have found people willing to ship but if it's real heavy obviously that's just going to be outrageously expensive but for fabrics and stuff if I feel like it would be a reasonable shipping rate, I'll message the person and just say, would you be willing to ship it? And I've had no problems so far. Most people are very accommodating. And I've never been ripped off, so. Okay. So, that's going to cover that part up. And then that's going to give me two pockets. I'm going to have the top one and then underneath. And then I'll probably wind up putting like a corner pocket here to tie that off. Okay, so what's going to go on the other side? I think I decided to go with this thing here. Makes it gives it an eclectic look. Well, first things first is we've got to, or it could go that way. I don't know. I feel like I want the letters facing down. So first things first is this is the line that it comes in that paper pack. So we're going to cut that off. And I don't throw those away because um, they go on my Franken paper. Okay. And I'm going to come in a bit.
guess who needs a new, um, I guess who needs a new blade? Okay, we'll cover that. Nothing like learning your blades gone dull in the middle of a video. Okay, so we're going to go there. have to think about this when you're doing yours um you know if you're going to want it putting like a corner pocket or a pocket down here you know you want to just uh keep that in mind so you don't cut out designs that you're just going to want up covering up all right blade don't fail me now Oh, I was measuring it up there, silly woman. Okay, um, so since I mucked that up, I'm going to use some texture scissors and cut along that to give it something special. Now, I have loads of these as well, but these were nearby. <clears throat> I don't think wavy fits the whole style. That looks a bit more old world style, doesn't it? So we'll go with that one. And I'm just gonna cut along the edge. And then it cleans it up some, but keeps it a little bit grungy as well. Okay. More inking. If I can find my ink here, it's right here for my coffee that's gone cold. Okay. So yeah, you don't have to ink your edges. I like to ink mine because it just um, cleans it up some. Unless I'm working on a, a journal where the style looks better without inked edges. So to each their own. Sometimes I see in these Facebook groups where people get kind of snarky with each other and say things like, um, you know, why do you use ink and make it look all dirty? I said, like, okay, well, you're being kind of snarky. That's, you shouldn't call it dirty. Use a better word. Or, um, am I the only person who doesn't ink edges? And, uh, and they say it in a way where they're making fun of people who do. And it's like, you know, you don't have to get on Facebook and ex be ugly. You can ask people questions in a polite way that's not insulting. But I'm afraid this, my little video here is not going to fix that. So, okay. Now, uh, I'm going to ink up these, and I'm going to use the same ink as the other side. Oh, I should have done that before I put this in there. Oopsie, but that's okay, because you know what? You can just, you can fix that easily by putting something underneath it. show. I'm not going to bother with that really. I'm just going to ink up this side here. My table is very creaky. I never realized that until now. massive though. I love this table. I mean it's like probably about 10 feet long and it gets filled up very quickly. If there's surface space I will find something to put on it. 
our 17 year old daughter for years now. She often comes into my craft studio and cleans up for me. She's so sweet. And uh, I don't ask her to do it. She just does it. And she does such a good job. She'll color code, organize all my ribbons. She's working on my huge flower tub right now. Thousands of flowers, paper flowers, and fabric ones. And she's organizing each. I was just big, big dumping ground. She's organizing all that. And I appreciate it. And I do reward her, even though she doesn't ask for it and didn't expect it. So just remember that you can overlap your um, papers and you can just trim them down. And then here, this does come in handy. I do find that these bone folder things come in very handy. I'm not trying to get you to go buy stuff. You don't need to. You do what I've did for years, which is use my finger. But um, I really, really dig these things. Okay, so now let's go back to spacing it out. That looks so nice, doesn't it? And um, and then we'll start adding some layers. But I'm going to go ahead and put my base down. All right, so here I'm going to do, it's going to be a pocket, and I'm going to use this middle one medium sized um, or you can use glue stick okay so again it's probably dependent on where you live on how some of these adhesives do better than others I live in a pretty temperate climate we get four seasons um, I'm in the Appalachian Mountains so Really different than somebody, like I said, living in the Florida Everglades or or somewhere where it's really cold all the time. You know, you're going to have to adjust probably your um, adhesives, and that is me just guessing that, but it just makes logical sense, doesn't it? Um, these little portfolios I mean you can I you know I stuffed it with quite a bit you can overstuff it and or you can leave a lot of the pockets kind of you know blank empty not blank empty so that people can stuff their own things it's funny is I made one of these for my mom-in-law in England years and years and years before I ever heard of junk journaling. Um, we were, you know, raising four kids. Three were toddlers, and we have a special needs. Uh, he was a teen at the time. And England's expensive, so uh, you know, most of your money goes to rent, or we couldn't afford to buy there. Gosh, real estate was so expensive. But it's a lovely country really really nice but we were broke so I had to hand make all my gifts I mean everything even the children's birthdays and Christmas gifts I did homemade toys and homemade games and for my mom-in-law for her on like a mothering Sunday or something her birthday I got all this scrap paper and crafting materials and I made her like kind of something like this very similar but with um some lavender type colors and it was really really nice I thought it was really nice and then uh you know years and years later we'll cover that. I stumbled upon junk journaling and thought oh shoot this is one of my favorite things to do even though what I'm making right here is using more of my designer papers and, well the envelopes were junk they were just laying around but um, I will actually make one of these using just junk, junk mail type stuff. That'd be fun. Um, okay, so you can see how it's transformed. 
I mean, literally at this point, you're almost done. Isn't that amazing how you've just turned three envelopes into this cool thing? Okay, so now we're gonna add the layers. So I, like I said, I did, cause I, it would, we'd be here on this tutorial for like weeks if I sat here and showed you how to make all these things, but I'll explain it as I'm going through it. Um, all right. So I need some stationery to put in there. So I made this stationery. Um, and uh, I'm going to put a belly band. I, need, I, I didn't make the belly band. I'm going to have to figure that part out. I think I'm going to use that stationery instead for the top part. And then this fun thing here. What else I got in here? All right. So I do need to come up with some, that could be a neat belly band hey 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 I might use that instead of a real thick one let's see I might change my mind but it would match the cover and uh, it actually looks pretty cool I like that <gasps> I love this yeah okay now I said I'm gonna cover that up there so let me just see let me let me pull out my box of washi tape Okay, so I'm going to just pull out a few that might wind up being, oh gosh, look at that, that's so cool. I love that. Um, railroad track look good. Just some that might look good in this particular style of journal. Um, I'll work, I'm trying to look for something skinny too. So I might need some skinny too. I might not use any of them, but let's just go ahead and pull out a few. And this is just a, that would look real good. This is just a smidgen of my washi tapes, but um, this should work. Okay. Um, I'm thinking something skinny up here. Because I don't want to cover that up. Now what I do is, because my fingers would have taken away most of the, and I say that because I'll use that in some. I need to go a little bit further. And then I'll trim around it. Now, if you're not used to washi tape, maybe you've tried using it recently or not quite sure how it works. Um, here's the trick. Use underneath that. Here's the trick for your washi tape. Because we all know that stuff's not going to stick. So you use a glue stick. And then it will stick. And I'll just trim that. That's the trick for washi tape. All right, so this, put that in there. We have some stationery. I'm just gonna pop it in here um, to begin with because then I can, it helps me figure out my decoration. And that. So we've got that pocket there. And it 
it does have two pockets. Double pocket. That doesn't slip in there very well, so um, I'm thinking that looks nice like that, so with a belly band of some sort. All right, so we need a little bit more stationery. Um, or this card, this will look nice. This is um, this is a deck of cards. And that's the five of diamonds. Um, and I put that in there because it's got the man and then it has her and it says a word, word too much or a kiss too long and the world is never the same. I just love that. And then it's stationary, you can write on the back. So we're gonna add that. It'd be another little secret kind of thing tucked in this bottom pocket. That looks nice. And um, thinking that there. This might be too big for here. I think it is, so maybe this has to go here. Possibly, we'll see. That could go in there. There we go. And we're gonna decorate. All right, so this, the belly band's not gonna be really conducive for that. So, um, we could always do a belly band here, and then you have another little tuck space. That's interesting. But what we could do there is, let's see, where did that little paper clip go? Let's see if I have any in here. I do. So this is just a, I spray painted the paper clip and then scuffed it up some, and then put that on there. So maybe we just clip this in here. And these are some little journal cards that you can write on the back. I have ideas, thoughts, writing. And this is like a typewriter thing and then some of that paper and then a poem. That's nice. Something unique. So if we wind up just clipping it in, which is neat because when you close it, you'll have this like, you know, it adds to that too. Um... When you take this off, that's a bit plain, so we will decorate that. All right, so that's going to go there. That's going to go there. Changing it up some. This has got like a, you can make lists on there. Little library card. And uh, I showed you this earlier, but just kind of going through it again. You could put stuff under there if you want. So we'll tuck that in there. All right. Uh, so we do need something in here, and I like... The idea of a belly band right there because it does look nice so then when you take that bit out you still have something here so we can let's see I might have to make some more stuff to tuck in there I can even add that to the belly band um, so maybe that will be underneath it which is a little journal card you can and then it's got this journal card here you can use Tis late, the astronomer in his lonely height, exploring all the dark to cries afar, orbs that like distant isles of splendid are. And I'm going to glue that down. I'll do that when I'm done. Go back through. But that's flat, so that would fit under a belly band. So let's do that. Now, to glue this belly band down, what I'm going to do is use some really good hardy glue here. Um, I'm going to put you like that. All right, and I'm going to make sure it's good and flat. I think I'm going to put a little bit extra here. Go down a bit further. Okay. Now, to let this set, I am going to clip it while it's drying. And then I'll trim the ends off. 
so you put your clip down if you don't have clips um, paper these kind of clips you can use paper clips or even bobby pins can work I'm going to trim a little bit down and I'll save that because that can come in handy in something um, bobby pins paper clips these clips work really well all right so we're gonna let that sit and then when it's done that will slip under there like that and then I think we're gonna clip that in there but let me just see real quick now that's not gonna fit very well that might no that's gonna be so um, nope that'll hurt that flower we might, I'm just trying to decide which, which side I'm going to clip it on. Either way, it's going to get clipped in there. It'll look cute. Okay, I'm going to slip some of my cold coffee down. Oh, I just, I guess now it's, throw some ice in it and make it iced coffee. All right, so that's going to dry. I don't want to disturb that too much. Now over here, maybe I'll do some washi tape there just to kind of give it a little bit of an oomph. It looks a bit kind of boring. So since my fingers are going to cut there. Oh goodness me, these scissors need to be sharpened if they can't even cut a piece of washi tape. Blimey. Alright. So I think that dresses it up so I might go over some here. Yeah, these make nice little gifts for people. When you're looking for something unique. I mean, this has taken a while because I'm going through the design process and everything. But if I just sat here and, and put one together, you know, um, and didn't fiddle too much with the design, it wouldn't take that long. I think it needs something maybe design-wise on there. Maybe some of these little gear things. They're so neat. Um, just thinking like in the middle somehow. Maybe not. Maybe down in the corner. That'd look nice though. I'm wondering if I can put some little words on there. That could be fun. I think I'm gonna have to get a new little bag for these doodads because this one's getting kind of worn out. And this isn't the best. I'm going to get like a little Tupperware. I'll do that right now. Because I have it sitting right here. There we go. It's got some old paint in it. It's a clean one. I use those when I'm doing a painting. And I need to put paints in little containers and mix and all that good stuff. So. We'll use that for years. I'm still not convinced on that though. It does need something. Maybe a flower or some buttons. What do I have? Oh, I'll come back to it. Okay. So that's drying. Um, so we're putting that in there, but we need something to dress that up a wee bit. Um, Burlapy stuff, maybe. Could do like a trim. Go 
go this way with it. That's just kind of neat. Um, hmm. Um, maybe a small one. Okay. Um, thinking it needs something right there. Maybe one of these guys here. off but it, since this is clocks let's see if I get a clock right there and then you know what it needs as well let me just see if this will cut off and then I think it needs some uh, eyelash trim some kind of fiber yeah that was cut right off that's what it needs all right so let me get my fibers okay I found two that might work so um these here, there's a store near us in the city that has loads of these at new prices. So I do get some from there, but um, it's specifically a yarn store. Uh, I find these all the time in the local charity shop near the thrift store. They're really inexpensive. They sell people, I don't know why, somebody you know, does them by the bag, get a whole bag full of them. But I find if you sometimes put like a fiber trim under, it just gives it a little extra something. It's not so flat looking, huh? That's a good color. I think that's probably going to be the one. But just to be sure, let me um, let me just make sure that it doesn't need a sparkly black one instead. Or sometimes I use could use two different ones. Let me make it fun. Um, I think the first one. Okay, so see, my trim wasn't long enough, but I did not despair. And also, these uh, neutral color trims, you can always ink them up to uh, if you need a little color. Now we're getting somewhere. That dresses it up quite considerably. Still needs something down here. I'm not sure. And maybe some fiber trim along there. And that'll blend it kind of together. That could work. Yeah. Try a different color. I'm not convinced, but maybe. I'm going to leave it here just in case. Okay, I might even just get like a different trim. Or maybe put like a little bit more of this. Where is that? fiber trims is they'll haunt you once you cut them. They go everywhere. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to put that back up there, but I'm just wondering if I did that. Something, yeah, it kind of makes it a little bit better now. Um, hmm, I actually do like that there. So... What could go up there? Maybe another, just maybe a smaller one. I'll have to check the time here in a minute because I have to go pick up my daughter from Stuart Camping with Scouts this weekend. Okay. Looking better. Also try a flower. Um, think, think, think. Let's see what else I have. Bit of trim, maybe.
and I, it's still gonna need something here. I think it's some kind of lace. Get my lace. Okay, I'm just going to put a few different ones here. I have enough lace to probably open my own lace store, but I'm just getting a, a few different ones out. There's some flowers in my little lace store as well, so. I'm getting some ideas as I go through it. That's the same one there. All right, buttons are always good. Now, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm now not convinced that that's the right thing to. Whew. All right, I think we've got it now. This, that goes back there. That's going to go there. And then a bit of lace. Go along the top. And I still want to try to find some words for those little drawer handles. Okay. to the side. I'm starting to get a mountain mess here now. That's fine. I'd rather have messes to clean up than pristine crisp, crystal clean all the time because then that means I'm not doing anything except watching a telly or something. All right, I like that. And I am going to, because um, we're going with grunge here, I'm going to give it a bit of a an ink up just to kind of take away from the monotonous creamy color. All right, so these are probably being clipped long enough so I can take these clips off. And then, oh, I got a little bubble. Okay, let's get this on here. And I probably will use my clip over here, just so it helps get it lined up. Pop it there. Okay, let's glue this flower down. This is looking fun! Now I know you might be watching this going, I wouldn't have put that there, I would have put that there. That's fine. We're all different and I want to see what you make. So you guys make these and post me a link in the comments or something to the, what you want it making. Okay, then we're going to put, oh right, i got to glue this up here. I'm losing myself. I might need to go slurp down the rest of that cold coffee. I'll go ahead and put a blob there because then I'm going to need it. So I'm not going to ink up because I think it looks good with that contrast up there. And then, oh, I need some more ink. I, no, ink, glue. I'm losing it. Okay. And some more on top of that. Where'd it go? Here it is. Oh, I used to. That's fine. Okay. Let's see. That's that. So it's almost two o'clock. Hmm. I didn't trim that down. I'm going to do that now. I thought I did, but I didn't.
and I should have before I started working at the top of this other one, but I missed that. Another one of my Mary Lou stakes. There we go. That looks good. Which means I inked up something I just cut, um, cut off. What I'm going to do is add my ink back. Press that down. And then I'm going to grab another clip. I'm going to clip this. There we go. And that'll get it good and adhered. And then while I do that, I can trim this down. And save in that because it could be used in a cluster. Okay. It's a fun little belly band. I love that. I'll have to look for some more of these little tape measures at the estate sales. There. Okay, so um, I think while well, that's drying over here, it needs something. I'm not sure what it needs. Maybe it needs some kind of um, uh, quote or something from a book. So let me get that. Okay, I've got a hodgepodge here. Um, uh, shelter of the Hollow of the Earth. Where's my fireside? That might work because I have some firesides on here already. Um, refuge of the storm, overworld, passion, strife, and care, thunderclouds, skies, chill for climb, uh, and more of the fireside. Um, My silent servants wait. My friends in every season brighten to him. Angels and no, 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 no. words are things, and a small drop of ink falling like dew upon a thought produces that which makes thousands, perhaps millions. Oh, I like that. That's good. Okay. Not sure. So I like finding profound quotes and things. Um, if you don't have, I mean, these come from books that are literally just falling apart, and I save them. You could um, find it on the internet and print it, and then just you know, print on some coffee dyed paper or ink it up, what have you. But um, that's if you want quotes as well throughout your book. But I find it adds some interesting depth as well. Maybe it's just fun to find them hidden. I'm going to ink the edges a bit so it pops. It gives it dimension and makes it dirty. Oh, that's so funny. Why do you want to make your junk journal look dirty? It's like, well, we're trying to go for the vintage look. I think it's fun. Okay. So, give it a little bit of there. Perfect. That is perfect. And a little bit of glue. Okay. That's nice. Oh, I like that. So it'll be covered up. However, when, who, whoever winds up, oh, I remember I said I was going to glue that. Whoever winds up getting this, when they pull this one out, so it'll be covering it, but it's just nice because then it's like, ta-da! There you go. Um, I think it needs something here. I might use my, at the, if I'm going to use glitter glue, I'm going to use it. In the end, but I think I might just put an edge of just some like kind of vintage gold glitter on that to give it a little bit more of a pop. So I think 
that's good. I mean, I could actually put something there. This is where, you know, it's never ending. But that, that was a bit too thick. But um, I think a gear in the middle kind of gives it that whole nice kind of, you know, it's not quite steampunk, but it is steampunk somewhat. I might use a big one. Yeah, that's perfect. Look at that. <gasps> Lovely. I love it. It's absolutely perfect. Okay. I don't want to go over the whole heart because um, it's going to be overlapping. Just need a bit in the middle. That's nice, and it doesn't need the fiber trim under that one. I think it's just fine. Oh, I love it. Okay, so these are probably good enough to take the clips off now. Yeah, that's looking awesome. All right, I don't want to really flip this over. I can put my scissors there. So I don't want it to touch that heart because it will get stuck. Okay, so now, what are we going to put in here? Let me get my little box of goodies. And I'm going to try to find some words for the drawer thingies on the other page. But, okay, so we have this. We have this. Oops. Come back here. We have that. We have some stationery. And then we kind of neat envelope thing. And then we can make some more things if we need to. So I'll go ahead and grab some things that have that. Some things we might want to use to decorate with. It's kind of neat. I like these, but that might go well in the it's actual yeah, it's kind of neat. Um, okay, and I have this lace here as well. Okay, so let's work with this. Um, and I think we might have too much, but I can add some things on the other side. Um, I think I was originally thinking, uh, I don't know what I was originally thinking. Um, Don't want to cover up too much there, so I'm not going to cover that completely. Let's think about that one. Back here. And that flips out. No, it won't flip out very well though. It would have to go like this. There we go. So could, in theory, put that up there and then that would flip out. Oh no, it's upside down. I can't do that. Okay, let's think about this. I mean, it could just get tucked in there. Let's go with some stationery first. Stationery. Those are fun. And that's avocado dyed paper. I glued it to the back of some designer paper. So, pop you in here. And this is um, a folder. So I glued two pieces of paper together so I had a back and front. I made this tab. Cut that down. And then I just put some stuff on the top. That's actually just a strip from a magazine that I had spritzed with citrus all. But I like it because it has that little word love there. So I'm going to stick this on the, underneath in there because then it kind of pops up. Okay, then I have this envelope with some stationery in it. That might look nice here with a, a corner pocket. So if I did a corner pocket here, tucked it in, I would have probably... And that's okay because then when you take it out... Okay, so I think we're going to wind up putting that as a in a corner pocket. This I'm not sure yet, and 
probably need to, it almost looks like I can glue that to something. Yeah, I could always put it even on the back. Nothing stopping me from doing that. So that's an idea. That would cover that up too much, I think. Oh, that's not the end of the world. I could make that another pocket. And then you have yet another pocket to put something in. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, it means I cover that up, but it's not entirely because, you know, you when somebody might look down in there, it does, you know, they'll be able to see it. So that's kind of cool. So I'm going to think about that. Or I could cover this up. I think I like that better because you can still see it somewhat. I could cover it so that it's attached. That means I gotta cover this here up. Okay, we'll do that. That's what we're gonna do. And I'm going to cover it with some paper. Let's do that. Alright, so that'll be easy. We'll just use where's the tape? Here it is. Use my fat tape. Yeah. Now I will have to do tutorials showing you how to make all these smaller things, but to be honest, I mean you're just making pockets and tucks and envelopes. Um, and I just use pa papers in a style that I knew I wanted to go with for the whole journal. And then it's okay if I don't use all of it or have to make more or change it up. This will hide my crummy sewing machine sewing as well. So one thing about when you're using a sewing machine, and it, a lot of people have this as well, where it's just not doing, it's mucking up a lot. It's probably because you're sewing paper. So you do have to change out your needle. And um, if you're sewing paper that's got, you know, glue and stuff on it, or like this tape, it's, you know, it's really mucking up your needle. So just be prepared to change needles. And if you do use it for sewing fabric as well, you'll want to change your needle so that, um, you know, keep your fabric needle on hand to always just put back. Or what a lot of people do is just get a sewing machine that's dedicated to um, paper craft. But it's fun. I like the sewed look. I'm actually going to be making a sewing themed journal because I've got lots of stuff. I just have accumulated. I'll just put that there. Okay. This is going to look so neat. Pop that off. I need to find something to do with these little strips that I take off because I don't think they're very good for the landfill because it doesn't look like they would be biodegradable. I have to look into that because I try not to add too much to the landfill waste, you know? That's why I like to do repurposed crafts. Okay. And then I just, um, what do I do right here? It's okay if it's not perfect because you can trim it. All right, where's my, um, oh, I'm using those to prop that open. So we'll just use this. I'm getting a nice little hodgepodge of scrap paper here. My favorite sound. One of my favorite sounds. Oh, 
that's gonna look kind of funny because uh, I used some edging scissors, but we can get around that, no problem. covered in glue and ink again I'm gonna go pick up my daughter and everyone's gonna think I have some strange disease I do have crafty disease <laughs> artist disease So to do that, you can put two labels or even just some washi tape works, um, but maybe that's where I go find this, um, well, let me think about this, I could do the, I think we're just going to use washi tape. Yeah, that's going to be the easiest solution, and uh, I don't want to take up everyone's time. What I was going to say is you could, uh, I could go look at that steampunk uh, stuff I print, bought off of Etsy, and it might have some tabs. So I was trying to say, not labels, tabs. But, um, use that. Or at least we'll try it. If it doesn't work, we'll, um cut some paper tabs. Actually, let me cut that so it's got a better design aspect. Don't want too much. Okay, we can take the scissors out now, which is good because I do need to, um, It doesn't have to be. It could be in the middle. Because then when you lift it, yeah, let's do it in the middle. That's going to be better. Okay. Yeah, well, washi tape makes good hinges. Because it's flexible. It's not going to work there, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be in the exact same spot. Fine, because I'll put some glue there anyway. I'll take that part off so it doesn't hide so much. I think it'll be fine just not even having that one. To be honest, I don't think we need it. Oh, I 
put something there because I just tore it. And I know exactly what I'm going to put there. If I can find it. It actually is going to make it look awesome being torn. And it makes it look old. <laughs> Alright, so... This is the little booklet. It's got some coffee dyed papers. These are dyed papers I dyed, and then I just put it together with some washi tape. And this was like from a Tim Holtz doodad. Yeah, it's a nifty little journal. This lace isn't the easiest to get it in there, but that's okay because once it's in, it's secured. There. Okay, so we got clever. And we have things here, and then you open it up. And we, you know, we still need to decorate here, but we'll get to that. And I think this is still going to, I'm going back to the original plan that that would look good there. And it, either way, it, it looks good. So we need a corner pocket. Now we can do, we got one of two options there. We could do a paper or fabric corner pocket or a belly band. Um, let me see what I have. A lot of it just depends. So that would look good. That's option one. But let me see if I have any paper that might... Um, good you actually have loads of options i mean we could do both we could do you know i could do that which looks kind of cool and then that would slip in it's nice because it's got the little north south whatever that's called compass rose or something like that just want to make sure it's going to fit if i do that it should be fine that looks good okay so we're going to do that. Um, this punches out. This came from a Tim Holtz package as well. And I don't think it's going to ink up very well because it's very shiny. But what I could do is use a fingernail file. And um, scruff that up. Alright, let me do that. Okay, so I'm going to scruff up the edges here because it's glossy and that way it'll hold the ink better otherwise the ink is going to smear all over um, just to keep with the integrity of everything being distressed um, I'm going to give I'm going to give this some um, uh, lace just a little bit as well. Keep again with the integrity. Okay. And some I don't. It just depends design wise what you're going for. Okay. And uh, so I think I am going to attach this with a paper fastener. Um, I grabbed a few when I did my last little break. I've got you know, a box filled with them, but um, that one's going to be too little. These two will be too little, so it's going to have to be. I'm going to put those in there because they're coming. Okay, so it's going to have to be a bigger one. And that's fine. This is this kind of this metal looking thing. And I'm just going to literally just poke it in there. Get it through that lace. And back here. And that should secure cure it just fine. How cool is that? Um, it's going to have to go like that. This is going to look so cool. Alright, I'm going to cut the big part off here. Just to get it out of my way. Um... We're going to get our fabric tag and then we'll have to clip it, but we can work on some other things while we do that. I 
this. Sorry if my arm is blocking the view, but I have to hold it in that direction. Okay. So let's grab clips. I'm definitely getting a bit of a mess here, but I like it. I like when I see a big mess. It means I'm, I'm done. I don't have artist block. Touch wood. Touch wood. I have not had artist block in years. Okay, so that's going to fit doodad in there. I'm just putting it in there just for a second so I can see decorative wise. Because I don't want to put something that would maybe chop it in half. Now, let's see. I did, even though I said I wasn't, I didn't think that the Etsy steampunk thing would go. Some of it won't. It'll go on another journal. I love these. But I think some of these might work for some little, um, you know, just decorations. And you can see here the shop name. If you, There's loads more. I just printed out a few. There was loads of this steampunk stuff. And it's really cool looking. So um, that be some nice note cards. I'll probably tuck those in there somewhere. I'm not sure yet, where yet. But I'm looking for something small, maybe, to pop right there. Um, not too terribly small, but a wee bit small. I'm gonna go with the. Let's see. It may not work. And I'm gonna cut it with some fern scissors. So it pops, gives it more dimension. And we're just decorating now. Um, probably just, I, I try to not just do everything straight, but it actually looks good to kind of straight. And what I'll do is just put this side down and that could be like a little pocket. That's kind of cool. Okay, so this is the back side. Let me get, we're going to use the skinny tape for this one. If I can find it. Get a bit of a mess here. Get a helper. There it is. So skinny, it disappeared. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do, that's the back side there. This is where it gets fun. If you hear any squawking, that's our chickens laying eggs. And I need to go collect them in a minute because one of them has started to eat the eggs if I don't collect them soon enough. It happens every once in a while. We just got six, or I just got 16 new baby chicks. Because our old girls, they're like eight years old now. So that means they're on the last. Do you see, I did that. I do that wrong all the time. You guys, I do this all the time. <laughs> that, I want that side. There we go. Here. How do I do that? I do it every single time. Anyway. Um, but it. I got a whole, you know, bunch of different types of chickens. I got some lavender Orpingtons, little baby chicks, and um, gold, golden Orpingtons. Some barred rocks. But it got to the point where um, they're all in the brooder box right by our front door. So they get a lot of socialization as we're going in and out of the door. And, um, I would, I'd 
go to the, the little feed store to get just um, some feed and I see more chicks. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there were two just sitting there all by themselves. What were they? Like West, uh, no, no, they were Su English Sussex. And I came home with them. I'm like, oh, my family's going to fuss at me. So I um, snuck them in to the little box. <laughs> it got to the point where whenever my husband was walking in the door, he'd have to sit there and count count each one. He's like, they multiplied. <laughs> oh, I finally stopped at 16. All right, so I'm going to, um, I want some kind of word there. I, I cut a lot of these out of magazines, but... Um, Oh, I like that. See the silver stars. Because they're in some kind of like flying contraption. And uh, that would be kind of cool. But I do cut a lot of these things out of magazines and books and stuff. But um, for the sake of convenience of doing a video, I'm going to... Um, Okay, we are getting somewhere. Let that dry a little bit more and then I can, um, so that's going to go in there. Right, so I think we have um, this thing here. I've got to figure out a spot for. It's really cool. You can just tuck inside somewhere. And I might just double tuck something. And tuck some of our stuff in now. We're gonna go there. Put your little sideways. Um, you know what? I did have this. I do that sometimes. I, you know, ones are getting stuck, and I can just put like a sticker or something over it. I think we're gonna put this in here. And this, okay, it's not flat, but that part is. So how cool is that? We're going to put it like that. Hey, hey, hey. It's almost like it was meant to be. Okay. Um, You're going to go here. Here for a minute. All right, so what's left? And I, would, I do want to put this in here. I don't have to, but it would be nice because it does fit with the whole thing. But it could just be something that goes on its own. Um, I almost want to say it would fit back here. And I'm tempted to actually adhere it to it. I mean, I'd lose that. But it's not the end of the world, is it? It's nice to have little secrets hidden sometimes. Hmm. That is tempting. Let's we'll see what the front cover maybe. No, that won't work. Oh, you know what I could? I could just clip it to the front cover. I've done that before. That makes it interesting. So it's just clipped on. Well, let's come back to that. So we will, we have to find somewhere. You know what? And you might be telling me, there, Louise, there. Let's see how this, I think we decided it wouldn't really go in there very well, but let's just see maybe. Nope, it's just a wee bit too big. Now, I, in theory, I could cut it down, but that's going to be a bit difficult. Okay, I've got it. I think we know where it's going to go now. You go here, and then you go here. Yeah, I think it's nice and stuffed, so yeah, we definitely need to come up with something here. And that adds to it. Um, I could clip it there as well, but I think it, it does better being clipped right here. Okay, uh, let's see. I was going to look for some words there. They don't have to be little bitty word, words though. So maybe like memory. I'll do one. And if it works, I'll find some others. The other thing is I can find one that has four words in the same and one, two, three, four. So it's like your eye goes in a poem or something. Let's see. Do you see any that have four? No. 
So lots of threes. Do do do. Come on. Isn't that funny? Hmm. That one is make me a promise. Make me a promise. So let's try that maybe. That might work. Bear with me. This all the little detail work at the end, which can go on endlessly. So I will find a piece of mind here to say, okay, done. I do go back. Um, if things are popping up stickers that, you know, like as I'm touching it, I'm getting rid of the sticky. Um, I'll just go ahead and pop it down. And then at the end, you know, if they're coming up, I'll just go over with some glue blue stick on the back. Make. I do like how that looks though. Me. This is where I start getting poetic. But that's what these things are, kind of just bits and pieces. So it's artwork, it's, but it's like usable. Me. Definitely will have to be glued down. That's fine. Not a problem. Uh-oh. Where'd it go? There it is. Whew. Teeny weeny old letter. I might have to go and lose it. Let's see. That. A bit difficult to distress that, but it does look better, I think. Has it? A. I think it's cute, quirky, cute. That's kind of what we're doing here. So why my shop? Well, it's not a shop. I'm not selling anything. But um, my studio is called Cute Neek. It was a shop at one time, and it's probably going to be a shop again one day. But um. I'm still considering my options. Okay, I like that a lot. And this needs something right here. That's a bit dull. So let me get my, do I have any words? Another thing I can do is get some, um, sorry, I'm going off screen here, is um, my charms. And he, he, oh, look at that. That is so cool. It's kind of heavy, but it might work for um, the spine, or for, for the spine. I've got always more charms than this, but this is where I just happened to dump a lot of keys recently. That's why. And keys seem to be Is it? I'm just pulling it out just in case. What does that say? West Virginia. <laughs> That's not too bad. Yeah, it needs something there. Put this out of the way. Okay. Come here. And um some words. What did I do with those words? Oh, they're right here. I've got some. It's a dictionary. But maybe. I like restore. You know, it kind of goes with the theme a little bit. Restore. Mechanical. But it's also, you know, to restore yourself. Reset. Sometimes you got to take a break in life. And, um, reset. I got these off of Etsy, too. I'll try to remember to, ooh, I like that. Uh, I'll try to remember to put a link. Um, sometimes I say I'm going to do something and then I forget. Because I'm at that age. But you guys can always remind me. Okay.
make the edges. Yeah, okay. Pull the glue. I think we're getting we're getting almost done here, which is good. It's probably taking up quite a lot of time. very important and uh, I will glue those down but I'm gonna wait just a minute um, I almost feel like that needs something and I think we might do a little bit of detail right here as well yep perfect I almost feel like this flower needs something like that in the middle. Maybe not that one. Maybe. Nope, that doesn't do it either. Uh, I'll come back to that. It needs something, I feel like. Just kind of dull there. Maybe even just some glitter. Okay, I like those gears there quite a lot. So we're going to ahead and pop those down kind of hard to again I'm using clear glue because you're going to get glue showing through that and um, up the art glitter glue this stuff here it's really good glue it says it dries clear but it doesn't it's a big white goopy mess um I didn't even realize it said draws clear because it sure does not. At least not in the Appalachian Mountains. Maybe where you live, it will draw clear, but I always wind up with white blobs, which is fine for some things, but yeah. Kind of got a bit blobby. Okay, so we are probably near complete here. That's still kind of drawn a bit, but I can take these off now. They don't have to stay on there for long. And then I can um, trim it up. So when I do trim up, I just turn it over and... You know what? We're going to use these. I have replaced these scissors during one of my pauses. Oh, that works better. And I will and we're gonna put a little glue there because I'll do that at the end I'll go around at the very end and just any loose ends you know get those get those sorted and you'll find bits and pieces here and there or at least I do maybe you won't yours truly does okay and I gotta cut this one off too to get under there. I don't want to cut my trim. There we go. And that's okay if it's scraggly because I'm going to actually put some ink on the edges there. Okay. Right. So this this one here is, I showed you before, I believe, that it has, um, maybe I didn't show you this one, but it's got little, um, stickers that came from some kind of steampunk sticker pack, and this is hand-dyed paper, it's textured, it's really neat, and what I did was, um, this was some designer paper, and then I put napkin on the back, and then I cut it, it with my envelope cutter, Oh, and put some over there. I cut it with my envelope cutter and turned it into an envelope. Whoop. And I'm not too worried about gluing things down just yet because that can just come after the fact. As long as it's there enough. 
and I think we're going to go ahead. Oh, it's going to have to go like that. So I quite, I think I'm going to do this side showing because then it's, you know, it's kind of like that thing there. Although it hides it, it's okay. Um, okay, you guys. All right, so this goes in there. This is looking so awesome. I'm thinking maybe it needs some like trim and stuff up here. Yeah, this needs something, doesn't it? Well, I like this washi tape. I didn't even know I had this. How exciting is that? It's, a bit, it's kind of quirky and stuff. It's got like um bugs on it. But in my charm box, I have uh, some bee charms. And I think some of them look kind of steampunky. So that might be kind of neat. I do like it. and uh, But it's a bit too insect themed. Um, so I'm going to bypass on that washi and find a different one. That's kind of nice because it thims it up a little bit. This one is already here. Oh, the railroad track. That's kind of nice. We could put a railroad track across the top. A brick wall would look nice too. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards this, the feminine one. Or I've got more. I can always just go look. What else I've got might work. I've got film strip. Um, you know, some script of some sort. That could be nice, actually. Something different. Because I've got those already on the other side. So let's go with the script. Because I think of this as like a, you know, some journaling inventor going off in little crazy ships to explore the world. Now I gotta make sure I got the script the right side up. And sometimes it's really difficult to tell. Okay, I think it's this way. And I'm gonna gussy this up some more as well. charm could look nice some of the, the trim underneath of her yeah and then some trim and a key there we go the other thing that looks nice I've got this random goldish colored flower I mean the possibilities are endless they really are but basically from a tutorial perspective you're going back through and adding your detail work because the detail is really what makes it and it's up to you on how much you want to add if you're if you're doing these to sell um, you know, you obviously want to consider cost so that you're making a, a profit of some sort, at least breaking even, just so you can buy some more supplies and stuff. Um, now, the last thing is when I add some glitter. Glitter goes last because it takes forever to dry. So... some sharp uh, you know what maybe I should start selling my journals so I can buy some better scissors I'm actually gonna have to start selling here at some point because I'm overflowing with the journals but I'm making them a sanity and some of these that I've used things I've purchased you know I, I think there's like a, a rule that you can't use it to resell anyway so I'd have to go backtrack that I like that I like that a lot now, I could glue it there, or I could sew it, but I kind of like it this way, so we're going to glue it. You're getting glued down, buddy. i got to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of the day after I pick up my daughter, because this will be done, and I need to work on some new things. And looking at this key, I think I might decorate keys today.
like I had a whole bunch of just normal keys uh, boring normal keys and I paint them up with nail polish and then add jewels and stuff to them and turn them into keys I can use in my journals I'm gonna have to clip that down so it glues okie dokie now I think this needs some gears of some sort right here some of these little ones This is the fun part to me. What detail? Thank goodness I have some nails left. Picking these little things up without nails. And fake nails. I had fake nails in my 20s. Late 20s, maybe. A friend got me a gift certificate. And uh, I loved them. I loved the fake nails. I was working in an office and it just looked real nice. I didn't get the crazy fake nails. I just got them to look kind of natural. But when it came to crafting, forget about it. <laughs> I don't know how you guys who have the fake nails do. They look pretty. I don't know how you do it because they, um, I couldn't pick anything up. Oh, and if I had an itch, like a on my leg trying to scratch through my jeans or something with those fake dull nails it's just it's horrible okay so i like that um don't necessarily need any anything there i like this clock thing i don't think it's going to stick there very well it might do though it is kind of nice but so is that metal hmm let's figure this out Oh, I really, I keep going back to that, but is it really going to stick? It may not stick very well. I could go underneath it. Right here. That still goes over it. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I like that. Okay. It looks like it needs to be in the shadows anyway. Um, And it's like a little romantic clock. I do want to find that B, even though I'm not using that washi tape. I feel like that B would look kind of cool. And uh, that could possibly use something right there. You know what I have are, um, they're stickers that come around because you put them inside of, um, well, it'd be too little for that or too big for that. They come in the bottle caps, bottle cap stickers. All right, let me find some stuff. I'll be right back. Okay, that it, the little stickers they are in this bottle cap sticker pack. Um, these are too big, but at the top they. Oh look, there's one with the gear. You have the smaller ones at the top. I don't know what they're for, but and I've, you can see I've never used them. But I'm just making sure. I think that first one with the gear is obviously perfect. That would be kind of cute too. Oh, look, there's the gear again. Ah, it's meant to be. I don't have an extra one left over. Um, I don't know why I thought of that. My memory has not failed me, but see what I'm saying? It adds a little bit more than just being flat. Okay, that's good. Then what else did I say I needed? Um, do, 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 do. Oh, I was looking for the bee and I got my bag out. I don't know where I'm going to put bee, but um, and it may not even be the right kind of bee, but I was thinking sometimes you see on the steampunk the bees. Uh oh. Silver just doesn't seem like it would go very well. Oh, this is a too bright of a copper. It needs to be dull. The little one is cute. Maybe it'll go on the cover. We'll see. I may not use it. I don't even know what made me think of it. Um, oh, look. I'm being attacked by these. Oh, you know what? The bag's going bye-bye. And I'm going to 
use these. I'm going to finally utilize something. So much easier. Because then that little thing will fit in my bigger charm box. Okay. So, um, just going to see where it goes now. Maybe I can clip it on here somehow. Add a little detail like that. Oh, that disappears, doesn't it? Let's see. Put it on here. That's kind of cute. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, I can even dangle it down. Tie it with a string and dangle down. That's kind of cute. So, um, I need some string. That's not going to work. Maybe this, and it dangles down. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do that because then it's going to draw your eye down there. Okay, well, you're getting to see some of the design process, which is nice. It can be tedious, but um, oh, you know what? Instead of thread, I have something better. I'm going to use a bulb fastener. Let me try that. So these are uh, bulb pins. They come in very handy. Oops. Uh, this is where silver might actually work, but uh, yeah, I think we're gonna use the black just so that the B stands out. I do have bulb pins exact same color, but I want it to stand out. So I'm gonna have to come up through here like that. So you have to go like that. And there. And now I have a little bee. And it's kind of quirky and fun. Oh, I've got one here too. Okay. Um, Let's see, we're letting that dry. So let's work on this a little bit more. It might, I just feel like it needs something. I'm not sure what, or maybe it just needs something to go, hello, here I am, look at me. Um, and I've got this box of stuff here. That's kind of cool. Make it stand out some. Um, or I've got And we'll definitely probably throw a bit more of the those things on. I also have, um, you know, you could go completely off kilter with it. Um, buttons, those might work. Let's see. I've got this, um, I don't know what it is. It's like a dangly charm. Okay, so um, gonna to work on it. I'm gonna have to hold, hold, go out with it like this. It needs something though, definitely. I could hang this down from here. Oop, good gracious, <laughs> fumble fingers. That's an idea. You're gonna have to go like that. If we're going to do that, we have to just be careful where we want to put it. That's sort of cool. And I like this, this flower. It, it kind of looks almost like it's been um, put together like a steampunk kind of. Okay, maybe let's look in here. Definitely needs something though, doesn't it? So, I could have hung that down. No, that kind of makes it look icky actually. We don't want icky.
This might wind up going on the inside. It's a bit too coppery for the cover. Um, this has to come off. It's just plastic, so it comes right off. Yeah, definitely. I think this is going to go on the inside. Do that in a minute. Um, that didn't come off enough. Okay. I think it looks better like that. And then I'm not sure what to put there. Maybe, um, oh, what about um, one of these guys? Sometimes that helps to put. Yeah, it could go down here as well, which is the kind of normal place it would go, but I don't know. It... Well, we're going to put a word in there, so it'll, it needs to be lightened up, but we're going to put a word. Um, grab my words. Fincher would kind of be neat. That might be too big. Yeah. Moments. I think moments is the right color too. All right. So let's try that. It may be too skinny. That's okay. We can doctor it up. Wonder would look nice, but that looks too like a horror. Looks like a horror type um, horror film font. They messed up with that font. Um, but I'll, I like all the other ones. Let's see. No, that doesn't go. Hmm, let's try a definition. I think I see a good Work, we'll try something else. Sometimes the design process hits a kink, but we don't give up. Let's see. That isn't too bad. Oh, I'm going to center it. Ah, I think it does it. Oh, it be that in here. Okay, so I'm going to trim that. And then trim that. Okay, we're doing good. And then I'm going to actually give it a little bit of a distress on it. doesn't look so freshly printed. Yeah. That's going to be better. While I'm here with this, I will have the glue. Okay. I locked on some glue on this one. My intuition said, lop it on, so I did. Okay. Where's this glue now? I think what the cover needs to somewhere is um, maybe some, we'll see. It, it might need some fiber trim, eyelash trim.
for the life of me, I cannot remember where I got these, but I will tell you they're called book plates. So if you research book plates, and I'll try to find where I got them. I got them ages ago. Come in handy for journal covers. And I'll just glue it down. Get it good and smooshed down there. Because I'm not going to let that dry. I need another one. Let's see. That'll be better. There we go. Okie dokie. Now, let's sort out this. And does it need some eyelash trim? Maybe. These need to be spaced out better. Um, I've got these. It's kind of weird, isn't it? These might be better. Let's see what we got in here. They're fun. And I've got um, a clock. I think that would, it just would look better. I've got this one here, but that looks more like Alice in Wonderland type. Um, that's kind of cool. It's a bit heavy. I think I'm going to go with a simple simple clock. I'm going to put those there. Go for that. And I'm going to have to attach it with a an o-ring. So let me just make sure I want to do that. Another thing I could do is just tie it on there. That would actually kind of be cute. Tie with like a little bow. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Let's see. I'm just going to grab some, um, what are they called? O-rings? Junk, junk rings? These things here. They're above me on these shelves. I love them with jewelry stuff. Okay. Just need one. I have jewelry, um, pliers. Is it the end is right there and I will get them if I need it but this is why Louise does not have nice nails okay So that way it lays flat. Yeah, that's much better than that gold thing. And I know this is holding this to the back of it, so I'm sure it's clipped in there. There we go. Okay, that adds to it. And, um,. That looks dumb. No, it's too, it needs to be kind of flowy. And I think I'm going to get a couple of these small ones. They may not go, but I'm thinking just to add a little bit of detail. No, they're too little bitty with it. Never mind. Okay. 
All right, so um, kind of kind of uh, skew down. I'm trying to make it like go down like that. That's good. Yeah. All right, here we go. Just put some glue. I think we're, if not done, very close. I think we're actually done. Well, that's drawing, but the fabric tack dries rather quickly, so that's one of the good things about it. You just don't want to be in a fumy and you want to be in a, a well ventilated area because it is fumy. Um, unlike some of the others. Let's see, what else was there? That's it, isn't it? Okay. And then we'll come up with some kind of tassel thing for the the back side of it. All right. Um, I still might find a picture. I'm not sure. Um, maybe in those printouts I did. There might be something I could put there. I'm thinking maybe something like that. Stamps are cute too. These are all really cute. I'm, I think something like that. Let's try it. I have little scissors. Try this one. If it doesn't work, try the others. This is cardstock. It doesn't make as pleasant of a sound as just regular paper, in my opinion. Alright, we're doing a wee bit of fussy cutting here. I'm going to fess up. I do not like fussy cutting. Not my favorite thing to do. But, sometimes, and this isn't even that bad of a fussy cut. I have friends that they can fussy cut the, the most minute detail. And they do it so well. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I will pay you to do all my fussy cutting. Just not something I do, but I'll do it if I, you know, if I want it bad enough, badly enough. Okay. Um, that looks. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so that kind of looks weird. I'm not sure. Maybe it, maybe it goes there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to hide that. Um. So, yeah, it just breaks up the monotony some. Let's see. This is kind of too glossy, so I'm going to scruff it up. And I want to scruff the whole thing up because I feel like it's just not the right perfect color. I don't know, I should be using these things on my fingernails, but I'll get there one day. When I retire, I'll just spend all day doing my nails and stuff. Okay. And where's my doodad? Here we go. I need some more ink. feel like it needs to be pretty scuffed up. Now that I'm getting good messy, that's when I'll get the phone call that my daughter's ready to be picked up. <laughs> they were just waiting for me to get very messy. And this needs to be
camera overlap. That's a bit more interesting. Um, let me look in the interesting settings and just see if anything fits me. Some of these are so silly. Uh, at one time, not so long ago, I that might work. I might not use it, but I'll stick it back in its place if I don't. Yeah, it needs something to make it a little bit more interesting. if I can glue it down up here, actually. Oh, I'll just use some fabric tack. I'm just gauging so I know how far to go. There we go. Okay. Bear with me. I just, it's got to have the right detail. And a cover, you know, you want to go overboard with a cover. Well, unless you're doing some kind of, um, I'm just going to use the top here, some kind of minimalistic type journal. Um, some papers are so pretty. They're so gorgeous that, you know, obviously those, you probably don't want to put a lot on it. A friend of mine, one of my pen pals, gave me one of those, and the paper was so beautiful. And she used this pretty green organza to cover it. And it worked for that, being minimal. It was really pretty. Perfect, actually. I just got it this week, and it cheered me up. Very, 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 very dear friend, person to me, extended family, pass away suddenly, it just happened suddenly, it was supposed to be like that, no one knew, um, and I was, I was out of sorts all week, I was definitely out of sorts. Thinking about, um, I mean, losing him, but also his family. And I'm still out of sorts, but I am distracting myself with creativity. Okay. There we go. Now that's going to need a clip is not going to fit in there so I'm just going to have to keep pushing it down until it's yeah now I'm going to um, let that dry and then we'll go back through and touch it up with any kind of glitter okay um, it's been a while actually I had paused the video and I'm back now when it's dry so I'm going to take some clips off and then we're going to go through and I'm going to add a little bit more to this cover because I feel like it's still missing some oomph. Um, but we're just going to play around a bit and because, um, you know, the cover is the first thing you see. It's got to look, it's got to look perfect. Not perfect, but you know what I mean. So we're going to add just a bit more of some fun to make it have a little bit more pizzazz, as they say. 
All right, so I'm gonna get some fiber trim here. Being attacked by a boar here. Okay. Let's try that. So it's not hiding the hair. Possibly. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's good. All right. <clears throat> It'll dry quickly then. That's the good news. Because it's not really anything major heavy. So let's... um. Sorry, I'm sounding a bit froggy. It's the pollen, you know? It's that time of year. The pollen is everywhere. And it's in my throat. Oop. Little glue strands. Now, do I want to add? I'm pretty sure I do want to add this. Little steampunky looking thing. Yeah. I think it's cute. Oh, I can hear my doggy barking. Probably a breeze of air came by. <laughs> he's decided he's going to bark. There we go. And we're going to put this clock here down. there maybe go in a little bit oh yeah perfect perfect I was spaced I was so determined to space them out that I forgot you know they might actually every once in a while look good pushed in together so there we go that is uh, I probably need a little bit more glue than that bear with me maybe I don't but to be on the safe side I'm gonna put a little bit more okay and it would help if I put the clock the right way. Yeah. All right. I'm going to fold this this way so I get a really good visual. Looks like that popped out. Ah, uh, I like that. Oop. I'm moving that around too much. And I actually will go ahead and clip that. So it gets good and dry while being pushed down, smushed down. Okay, so um, now it looks more exciting. My cover needs to look more exciting. There we go. Um, looking good. This has got to go. I'm just going to try this way, just to see if maybe that works. I might like that one better. Let's see. And there's also this way. I think I like this better. That's dry now. I love that. It's perfect. And you, you can still push that in over if you need to. Okay, and did we get, no we didn't, we need to add a little bit more here. So, let's think about this. What would be good to add? You know, let me look at these um, things that I printed out. Maybe, maybe, just maybe there's something I can cut out of the, I like that work hard, dream big. I really like that. Kind of sums up my, one of my philosophies in life. What does that say? See the world by airship. <laughs> that is cute. It definitely would be me. I have too much of the um, fear of flying, fear of heights. Always have. My daughter and I were just talking about that. I picked her up from scout camp. That we both like to we call ourselves control freaks. We like to be 
feet firmly planted on the ground <laughs> to be in control. Um, yeah, we've got these things that are like little pockets. Actually, I like this kind of bug looking one. Let's see if it fits. I'm going to cut it out one day anyway, so I'm going to cut it out now. And maybe, just maybe. Maybe, just maybe, it's um, going to work. And if it doesn't, it'll work in another journal, because I really like these little this kit, uh, digital printed, printable. I used to think I wouldn't really like, I was like, why would I need to print stuff? I've got so much junk anyway, but every once in a while, if I'm working on some kind of themed effort, it helps to just go on Etsy and I look at the, the theme and I'll print printables and I find some interesting things sometimes. And so I go for it because that's not my talent. My talent is not, I don't look good there. My talent is not drawing. Our daughters is though, both of them. Our oldest daughter, she's 18 and she has, uh, she's been going to, both kids have been going to a studio, art studio for years now. And the, the lady that owns and runs the art studio is an artist and she's like a mentor to them. So it's less art. She doesn't teach them how to how to draw and how this is. They choose their own projects and what they want to do, and she helps guide them along. You know, some pointers and tips on maybe uh, supplies they can use and things like that, which I like because they have their own style. I didn't want them to be influenced by somebody else's style. Anyway, they've been going for a few years, and our oldest daughter, she's eighteen now, and one of her art pieces was nominated to submit to. Uh, it's called the Congressional um, Art Award. It's this yearly thing. And if she wins, her art piece will be displayed at the U.S. Capitol um, for a year. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. So um, she, she, she's, she's like a prodigy artist since so she was a taught drawing amazing stuff and our other daughter too and she has her own unique style and they both are creative oh my gosh the stuff they come up with with their imagination it's their imagination that's just combined with their drawing talent i'm like oh all right you guys i like that that's pretty cool so we're gonna do that we need some wide tape um and then she's gonna have a solo exhibit it got postponed because of covid at a downtown in the city. We live rural, but in the city. In Johnson City, it's not a big city, but at a bank in the lobby. Um, like five or six of her pen, her ink drawings are gonna be displayed. So uh, that's exciting. They have that talent. I'm creative and I can make pretty things, but um, drawing's never been one of them. It's just not something um I used to do some ball like drawing when I was a kid. Kind of like Dada isk type stuff. More my style. Okay. But imagination is one thing I have in common with my daughters. I have a very vivid imagination and they do too. That's cool. Now I know I didn't make this um drawing and everything, but I haven't made any of the drawings, so that is awesome. I love it. Oh, it really makes it fun. So then we need some little cards to go in it. Sorry, I keep bumping that. Um, I'm try cutting these. Where's my other scissors? They would work better. I've lost them. Okay. So I didn't intend on using any kind of kit, but I am going to use the bits and pieces from these kits, or this kit. And the majority, 
of this is all my own doing. There's a couple of Tim Holtz thingies, but a lot of it I made up myself. So it's got a good mix, I think, that I can pop these in here. And it'll make it fun. My husband got this amazing printer. It's, um, I'm not plugging this printer. This kind of Canon has no idea that I'm raving so much about this printer, but, um, it's a Canon, oh, I don't know, TS95, something or another, but it's called, you can look it up by the Canon Craft Printer, Crafter's Printer, which automatically made me go, yeah, but it is good print. I mean, this is pretty good print quality. It's easy to use. And the ink's lasting quite a long time. I'm still using the same tank it came with, and I've printed loads. And it's just finally saying printer ink low, cartridge low. But you can change out the individual cartridges, so you don't have to change them all out at once, which is nice. And, uh, but what's really cool about this printer, it's easy to use, first of all, is uh, it prints on 12 by 12 paper. So, you know, when you get these 12 by 12 designer papers and the back's white and boring. So you can do a lot to make it not white and boring. You can uh, collage over the back of it. You can use stencils and stencil a pattern. You can glue napkin. You can glue another piece of paper on the back of it. Um, you can spritz it with mica spray. You can do all of the above and make it like multimedia. But, um... How cool that this printer can actually just print on the back. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it wasn't that expensive. It's always sold out. He got it on B and H Photos site. And uh, they're always sold out of that printer, but you can get added to the waiting list. And it was like maybe two weeks. So it, it, he said it wasn't long at all. He surprised me with it. Um, to get to actually get the printer so if you are looking for a printer i know a lot of you probably hear about you know epson eco tank and getting on that that's all that's all fine and dandy um colored laser printer is probably going to be like wow but i didn't have enough money for that um and i'll tell you what for a an inkjet printer this canon crafters printer all-in-one crafters printer is awesome it's like I think 250 bucks maybe which is a lot of money but it's not that bad it's not like thousands um okay so i'm thinking i'm gonna glue backs together maybe you know what i mean make it like a and um I'm not sure so much about that one. I'd have to tell you what, since I already have that design here, we'll do this these two together. Well that's a postcard. I'm being kind of silly, aren't I? That's what needs to go together right there, and then I'll just trim it. That's upright. Ah, uh, there we go. I'll still, you know what? Even though I'm sitting here measuring it all out. You watch. I'm probably gonna. I'll probably end up still making it um, upside down. Ah, uh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a glue stick because on my tape, I noticed was getting kind of low. So I'm gonna save that for critical when it critically needs to be double sided tape. My big fat wide one. And if I use the skinny ones, it would just take too. Although something fun you could do is tape just uh, three edges together and then put it down. And then it's like you have a secret pocket on the, you know, that's kind of cool. Hopefully this is the right way. Hopefully the lens is not. And I'm going to turn around. I got it right for a change. So trim this and then ink it. Where are those black scissors? Black handle scissors. Sorry that jostled you, but okay, there we go. So trim it. 
trim this down. And I'll have to trim quite a bit on the side. That's okay. Yeah, it's really cute. And I'm not sewing this, so. Like I said, I think if you sell it, there's probably some terms and conditions. When I go to you know, sell these, if I do, I will. It'll definitely not be digital printables, which I don't use that much of. I think there was one I looked up. It was an Alice in Wonderland. I was looking for something interesting. I found, and I was looking for some magic potion type labels. So I went ahead and just looked on there. I know I should probably get my kids to do it for me. Trust me, I've tried. They're not interested. <laughs> because, you know, in all fairness, they are doing their own stuff. They're constantly working on their own artwork. They're true artists, so it's not fair for me to expect just because I'm a, their mother. Um, I've actually paid my daughter to do some artwork for some books I write. Um, for some a bee illustration she did for me. Because um, I don't believe in, you know, taking advantage of artists, even if they're my own kids. And uh, so I paid her proper, proper money for her artwork. So that's what you should do. I don't expect free. Okay. I love this. Cute and fun. It fits right in there. It's really cool. Um, and maybe we'll do one of these as well. I'm thinking these two here. I mean, that's cute, but that hat kind of just doesn't seem like it fits with this. And the guys are interesting, but still not what I'm looking for. So this is nice because it's got... You know, I've got the heart uh, gear, and this has got the little hearts in the gear. I like that. Yeah, for personal use only. So, not to worry. This is personal use. It'll wind up getting gifted. I will see you know what I'm gonna to talk to my daughters and see if they would be willing to make me some steampunk type digital art that I can use when I go to finally start selling my work which I'm still not sure if I'm gonna sell it or not I don't really make these to sell I make them for my sanity what's left of it Oh, it's got the balloon. Oh, and it has this here, which I have on that envelope. So this is a nice flow. How cool is that? All fits together. needs more than one. That's why I'm doing this other one. And then I promise, I think at that point we should be almost done, if not done. It's, it was just that last page. Oh, this little area that's not been decorated, so let's get her done and uh, see how we did. I mean, like I said, you can, when it comes to detail work, I mean, it's just never ending. You can you can just sit there and constantly find areas to add this and that to. So at some point you have to say, okay, I'm done. All right, we'll just trim the edges. Good. And then 
this side we have the corners. And it gives you space to write, which is nice. A lot of people think journaling has to be just lots of blank pages, but actually you can journal random brainstormy type thoughts or important information or whatever, you know, lists. Having lots of spaces comes in handy, different spaces. It doesn't have to just be linear writing in a regular old notebook. All right, let's ink that up. And after this, I'm going to make a rhubarb pie because my rhubarb I planted three years ago now um, has come up. So it's the fresh young shoots and then I'm just going to make a rhubarb pie plain, and then strawberry season where we live is really big where we live, and um, pretty soon, pretty soon it'll be the strawberry festival, like literally in two weeks. It's a huge strawberry farm here. I'm going to use dream because this is kind of like dreamy and surreal like. And strawberry rhubarb together are just the, oh, it's such a nice combo. And you, you really, it doesn't work with out of season rhubarb and out of season strawberries. It's got to be a seasonal, like once a year kind of pie or crisp. Strawberry rhubarb pie or strawberry rhubarb crisp with some homemade vanilla ice cream. Not the kind of stuff I can eat every day, but you know, a, Rare special treat, I will indulge. That rhubarb, it, whew, no danger of it disappearing. That stuff just grows like weeds, literally. Comes back year after year. And I planted asparagus last year. It grew last year. This year, I'm not kidding you, those asparagus stalks, whatever they're called, they're like, they are. I'm not kidding you, four foot tall. They're huge. Absolutely humongous. That's an elastic. That's interesting. Maybe that. Maybe that's nothing. I like that. I just need something up there. Or I could use washi tape. Let's see. All right, I'm going to use that. This is just the little detail bits and bobs. And we won't sit here all day, but I am going to um, add a little bit. I won't be able to sleep if I know that I could have added just that little bit, but didn't, so. We're going to add it. And I like this, but I need to do something to it. It's too crisp and clean. This other ribbon, hold on, before I go lopping that on there, it's right behind me in this little bucket. It's, um, I've had it forever, so if I can find a way to use it, I think somebody gave it to me. It's like a pack of, I think it came in like a pen pal type thing. Might work, we'll see. Because it's got that kind of copper metallic. No. Well, let's see. Maybe this other one. This one here. Nope. Although it might go in this darker one. Maybe. We'll go back to original plan, which is this one. And that does work really well. I think this is the right side. Some of these are hard to tell. All right. And what it needs 
is You know what, it's got that bug there, so maybe. It's a shame that's not like bronzy colored, because that would be perfect. Gold might work. Gold actually does. Have, normally I wouldn't think it would, but. And I might have it hanging down. Do that. And it kind of looks similar, doesn't it? So that's kind of cool. Now, um, I guess I'll use a ball pen if I can remember where I put them. Because my desk area has gotten a bit messy. But these guys here. And... Um, Normally I'd use a contrast color. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I'll use black. Nope. Bronze. I might wind up using gold for this particular one. I don't know. It's just a, the way it gets appealing to the eye. No, we'll use the bronze. Alright. I'm just going to clip it in there. It's cute. Now I like this, but it's too crisp and clean. So I'm going to do something that I quite often do, which is I'm just going to rip around an edge, make it look more grungy, just the look I was going for. I graded my thumb. Sorry about that. Maybe that makes me doozy, but. I made cauliflower rice where you grate the cauliflower with a like a cheese grater and then you strain the moisture and then you can stir fry it or you know, cook it up and it's like a rice substitute it's really good I made burrito bowls with it with black beans it was a vegetarian dish and topped it with like onions and avocado and stuff so really neat my thumb. Our cheese grater is rather sharp. It works really well too well. And I'm always, when, when our kids use that grater, I'm like, don't cut yourself. Don't, you can grate yourself. And they don't. But then look what I do. <laughs> Honestly. Just crazy. I might be able to cover up that spot where it got a little bit of black ink on it. It's just not the end of the world to me, but. Uh, so kind of okay, but it's going to need something in it. So these might be, oh, sorry, I keep jostling that. This might be too. That works. Okay. We're going to need. I think the medium would work well. No, we'll use a skinny. All right, so that's the side and that's the bottom. Yeah, this makes it a little bit more interesting. Jazz is about. to believe this started off as just three plain envelopes okay so I just want to and I'm not going to glue the uh, one of the back because this you can use as journaling on this side and then you can journal on this side and uh, if I wanted to do lines which I might do is um, I have corrugated cardboard that I use as a template, go over it with some lines, I'll do that. So now you've got extra places to journal. And it, it really dresses it up. So the only thing I think is needed 
now is just a tiny little bit of embellishment. I'm destroying everything now on my, de my desk, but I think it needs something like a real one, yeah? And this one does too. Nope. Oh, this one needs those little ones. I have figured it out. Give it to these people. Ones there, boy. So, I think we'll put some little gears. We put like two or three together and it just adds a little bit of pizzazz. Wow, I think this really makes it. I think after I put this on here, I think we definitely will be done. Don't quote me, but I think we will be done. Another thing you can add, um, you know, to embellish, you can do like clusters and everything, but I think um, I, I like this idea of using the um, gear, you know, because it adds to the whole scheme. Okay, so. here. These are lightweight. If it was heavy, I would add a um, clip, but it's pretty lightweight. Glue strings are driving me batty. All right. Got ink under my nails. That's gonna drive me nuts. Okay. Ta -da, I think we're done. I mean, you could totally just add this one little piece down here as like a little, a little blip, like a little word, a saying that just, there we go. It was an artist's life I wanted. How perfect is that? And I'm going to distress it so it pops a little bit. Just a wee bit. There we go. I love this. Okay. Perfect. All right. So let me see if this is dried enough here. Should be. Love that. So now all we need is how we're going to close it. Now, the easiest thing is for me to just get some ribbon. And I might just do that. Um, you know, other options you have, you can do grommets here, you know, and, um, you could do button, you could do elastic, but I think we're going to use a ribbon. So let me get my ribbons. Be right back. All right. So I went ahead and I opened up my ribbon box and I saw this one right there on the top. And I think that just, it's a dyed silk ribbon and it's just perfect. So we're going to go ahead and use this. I'm not going to think too much more about it or, um, have over overthink it. Probably don't need that much. That should do it. Probably more than what I need, but you can cut more off, but you can't add to it, so. perfect is that? It's a perfect ribbon. Okay, you guys, let's put this junk out the way. Well, junk, it's nice stuff, but I guess you don't get offended when you call nice stuff junk when you're doing junk journals, even though it's more like this one's not less junk journal. And 
I wish you were really cool. I like it though. That's what I'm going to call it. The I like it journal. Just making some space here, and then we're going to go through it. The whole thing. And then we'll get a side by side comparison of the other ones I did so you can see all the different styles. Okay. There we go. So there we are. Ta da. Oh, you know what? It matches that too. <laughs> I normally don't wind up matching, but maybe I'm getting better at it. That was an accident. All right. So we went with like a kind of grunge steam kind of look and feel but slightly different with a bit of a romantic twist to it um oh we need a tassel and here we have you know the shabby um garden one and then here we have kind of like the hippie trippy colorful hippie design so we have three different styles all made with just three envelopes I did a walkthrough of the fun, trippy, hippie one and the shabby garden one. So we are going to do a walkthrough with this one. And I know I said I need to add a tassel, but I actually think it looks pretty good without a tassel. So um, we're going to go ahead and say we're done for now because I think it looks awesome. And you've seen the design process. Um, so how cool is that? Three envelopes and you wind up with this. And you can do all kinds of designs. Um, Okay, so there we have this part that's clipped in, and it's just really fun, and it has some journal cards on it, and then we have this that I slipped underneath, and it has the, and you can write on there, this is really neat, made out of corrugated cardboard. I love it. It has, you know, it goes with the theme with the clock and everything. And then it's got a bingo card and a ticket. You can run on the backs of those. Oh, and it came open. Sorry about that. Louise. It might be too heavy for it. If so, I'll add a light, something lightweight. I think I just jostled it too much. There we go. Crunchy fun. See, like a little bookmark. Try this. There. Okay. And then we've got this belly band. It's really cool. Some poem. I love how this tape measure made a belly band. And then we've got some stationery in here. It's got like a little card thing on it. Oh, I'm going to glue that. So I, I mentioned I do this when I go through one last time I find all the loose ends and I will glue those down and there won't be many and um, so we've got this stationery this one it's a little card you can journal on the back of and you can journal the backs of those and then some more stationery Lots of space for some fun, quirky, eccentric stationery. And multiple pockets, so whoever winds up with this can tuck their own things in there. Then we have this little, um, and I'm going to glue those down. This has a little journal card, you know, the library card. And then it has lots of space here to journal on, here to journal on, and then this fun napkin I decoupaged it with and it pops in there and now that I'm thinking of it you know I was going to put something in there I think it actually looks fine without it I might go back with my um, gold glitter glue and just maybe put a little splash I'm going to outline that and not like that that and this oh wait hold on we got to put it all back together Oh wait, I wanted to do it like that. There. So that thing is on the front. It would look fine back here too though. 
And then this folds out. Well, first of all, we have this little book with lots of space to journal and journaling papers that goes in this lacy thing. And I love the mix of the lace with the grunge. It's just quite nice. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then this pops out, ta-da, which we just finished. And you have a journal card and some cards. It's lovely B. And then we have more stationery. This thing's just chock full of cool stuff. And then in there. And this here is full of stationery that has the steampunk kind of look and feel to it. And you can pop it in any which way you want. I love that. It's perfect. And this awesome folder that's going to have some um, ledger paper in it. It has that steampunk look to it. How cool is that? And there's more pockets hidden. So, I mean, you could totally add more stuff if you wanted to. But I love it. I think it's wonderful. I'll go back through maybe and just add some highlights with some um, golden glitter glue. But I'm not going to add much because I think it's just perfect the way it is. I love it. I think it's great. And I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, and I hope you've got some envelopes laying around. Like I said, you could, they can be as big or as small. You can make some little wallet size ones. I mean, just go to town and turn, um, envelopes into fun journals, stationary type pocket folders. All right. Well, I hope you like it and thank you and bye for now.